Monday Night Baseball. Tonight from Anaheim Stadium, the Milwaukee Brewers and the California Angels. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Strohs and Strohlite, the circle of sports beer. By Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by IBM and its family of personal printers for the finishing touch. It is warm, it is humid here in Southern California, the Big A in Anaheim, as the Milwaukee Brewers meet the California Angels. The Angels on top in that American League West. You see a four-game lead over Oakland, five games over Seattle, two clubs that nobody expected to be there as we approach the All-Star break, followed by Chicago, Kansas City, Minnesota, and Texas. As far as the American League East is concerned, it is starting to build up. Toronto, two and a half games over the Detroit Tigers, four and a half over New York, Baltimore six and a half back, Boston eight and a half, these Brewers at 11, and Cleveland at 23. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Anaheim Stadium. I'm Don Drysdale, and happy that you've joined us tonight for ABC's Monday Night Baseball, the California Angels, and the Milwaukee Brewers. The Angels, well, they've been playing good baseball. They have won four of five. They've been riding the crest of the wave, and they've been doing it with youngsters and some oldsters, if you will. Manager Gene Mock pulling all the right punches, pushing the right buttons at the particular time, and indeed they do have that four-game lead over Oakland. On the other side of the coin, George Bamberger and the Milwaukee Brewers, they got off to a slow start at County Stadium in Milwaukee. They did not play that well, but all of a sudden they started playing a little bit better. The hitting started to come around. They were starting to get some good pitching, and all of a sudden they started to make things tough on their contenders in that American League East. As a matter of fact, the president of the Detroit Tigers said, that was Jim Campbell, watch out for the Brewers. If they start putting it together, they indeed can make things happen as far as the East is concerned. If they don't win it, why, they can really, they can really be a person that has something to say about it. But you've heard Tim McCarver, my partner, and myself talk about hitting and pitching throughout the course of ABC's Monday Night Baseball. And this afternoon, Timmy grabbed a bat, and he will show you a little about pitching and hitting, what we're talking about. Ever since Abner Doubleday invented this great game of baseball, pitchers have been trained to get guys out high and tight and low and away. Well, my experience for 20 years behind the plate taught me that the best way to get hitters out was to work both lanes of the plate. Steve Carlton refers to the inside lane and the outside lane. Bob Gibson used to say the plate's 17 inches wide and the middle 13's the hitters and the outside two inches are mine and the inside two inches are mine. There is, however, one danger area and that's the ball down and in. In last Monday night's game, the Baltimore Orioles against the Detroit Tigers, the Tigers left fielder Larry Herndon hit a ball that was down and in. In my opinion, the most volatile, dangerous area that you can throw any hitter. Technically, here's what Larry did. He dropped the bat head on the ball, just like a golfer. He didn't really have to extend his hands out to hit the ball. Technically, he just dropped the bat head. Now look where the sweet part of the bat is, between these yellow lines. Well, when you pit throw a guy down and in, you actually throw to the meat of the bat. When you work a guy in and out, you work to where you jam him, and you work to where you get the cue shots off the other way. It'll be interesting to see how Bob Boone of the, of the California Angels tonight and the Milwaukee Brewers catcher Charlie Moore does this because it's much more important to work in and out than up and down, and we'll be watching for that. And tonight you have two pitchers that will work in and out and not that much up and down. It'll be Danny Darwin for the Milwaukee Brewers and the big right-hander for the California Angels pitched a no-hitter final game of the 84 season, Mike Witt, a record of 6-6. Six and six. Now we're back here at Anaheim Stadium, game one of this three-game series between the Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm Don Drysdale along with Tim McCarver. Happy you've joined us again for ABC's Monday Night Baseball. And Timmy, as you look at this season in 1985, there's five people that you can really focus on and milestones of their career. And, of course, we're talking about Rose, Carew, Sutton, Necro, and the right-hander Tom Seaver. Well, I'll handle the hitters. How's that? 40, 191 hits has Ty Cobb. Pete Rose needs 37 to pass Ty Cobb. And 
Rod Carew only 22 hits from 3,000. There have only been 15 hitters to get 3,000 hits in their major league career. And it's incredible, Rod Carew, with all those great seasons, a lifetime 330 average, finally nearing into that 3,000 hit category. And Don, I must say that the people in Southern California hope that Rod reaches his 3,000 and Pete reaches his 4,192, because if it's after that, it'll be rather anticlimactic. Well, indeed it will, but I think we can both bet on one thing or count on one thing, if you will. They will both yes, get it. Sir. There's no yes, question sir. about that. And of course, in the pitching department, You've got Tom Seaver. Tommy terrific with 296 career wins. It took Tom four tries to pick up 296, but indeed he is right there and just four away from that magic 300 mark. Phil Necro, on the other hand, he has nine to go to reach 300, and Don Sutton at 288. Now for Don up at Oakland, while you never know what might happen, he can get hot and he can get there. But That'll be remain to be seen. We certainly wish him all the luck in the world. They've been five great competitors. So right now, let's take a look at the Milwaukee Brewers starting lineup. Paul Molitor at third. Ernie Riles at shortstop. Batting third at first base will be Cecil Cooper. Hitting fourth and in left field will be Robin Yount. Batting fifth and the designated hitter will be Ted Simmons. Hitting sixth and in right field will be Ben Oglevy. Batting seventh and at second base, Jimmy Gantner hitting eighth. And behind the plate, once again, Charlie Moore. And batting ninth. And in center field will be Rick Manning. And defensively for the California Angels, Rod Carew at first base. We mentioned Rodney with 22 hits to go for 3,000 hits. Rob Wilfong will be the second baseman. Dick Schofield, whose father played for some 17, 18 years with the Cardinals and the Pirates. Dick Schofield at shortstop. Doug DeSensei will be the third baseman. And in left field, Brian Downing. Kind of an unusual team for a Gene Mock team in that it's not as defensively oriented as it is offensively oriented. And there's an offensive cog right there, Rupert Jones. 14 home runs on the year. He leads the Angels in that department. Reggie Jackson not out there yet, but he will be in right field. Bob Boone behind the plate for the Angels. Bobby almost has 1,600 hit games caught behind home plate. The leader in that category, Al Lopez, with 1,918 behind home. And Mike Witt on the mound, 6-6 six and six lifetime. Make that 6-6 six and six this year. A 3.03 ERA has one shutout on the year. And there's Reggie Jackson. Well, Reggie now has taken his place. That is a tough spot here at Anaheim at this stage of the evening. That is the sun field, to say the least. Well, Reggie Jackson out there, you can see the shadows. It's not going to be easy for the hitters for a while until those shadows, they really move on out, and the lights take effect here at Anaheim Stadium as Paul Molitor gets ready to lead it off for the Milwaukee Brewers. Molitor... At a 3.15 mark, he has seven home runs and 30 RBIs. Molitor, you might say a catalyst as far as this Milwaukee ball club is concerned. If Molitor can have a good year, get on base, he can make a lot of things happen. Good speed, handles the bat well, certainly will bunt, as the sensei is well aware of that. And he's up inside the bag at third, and the big right-hander, Mike Witt, making his 18th start of the year, ready to go to work. And we're underway. That fastball in and over. Daryl Cousins, the home plate umpire, signaling the strike. With an excellent fastball to go along with an excellent curveball. He hangs that one, misses inside, and the count one and one. If Witt will do anything, Timmy, and we've talked about this so many times on and off of the air, it's a pitcher sometimes falling in love with that breaking pitch when he's not necessarily a curveball pitcher. That curve is high, two and one. Well, then that's up uh, to the catcher to really remind his pitcher what his best pitch is, and there's one of your finer catchers around, Bob Boone. Came up as a third baseman in the Philly chain back in 72. That fastball is outside, and the count, three balls in a strike to Molitor with Ernie Riles on deck. Molitor, he is just dedicated to have a good year. He wants to be a member of the American League All-Star team. That's fouled away right side and out of play. That's primarily because last year was taken away from him. Molitor, on May 2nd of last year, had surgery. 
to the right elbow. Well, he had the same type of surgery that Tommy John had. And he might be the first non-pitcher to undergo that kind of surgery as that fouled away. The tendon in his left forearm was replaced by the medial collateral ligament in his right elbow. Mm. Boy, I'll tell you, and speaking of Tommy John, rumor has it right now, and we're going to check this out even a little bit further, that Tommy John has indeed signed with the Oakland A's. We knew that, that he was up there working out with Oakland. That's fouled away, so Witt staying away from Molitor, and Molitor fouling him off to the right side. So we will continue on the Tommy John and Oakland A's story throughout the course of this broadcast. And we'll pass along any information that we might have just clarifying what word we do have already. That rumor has it that he has indeed signed with Oakland. 3-2 pitch, that's fouled away. We will be talking to the vice president general manager of the California Angels, Mike Port. John, of course, released by the Angels. And I'm sure that the Angels would certainly have some knowledge of what was going on with Tommy John because there are dollars and cents involved. That's right. That's fouled right side, and that's out of play. Molitor hitting 315, and for a leadoff hitter, he will take the base on balls. Six for 26 against Mike Witt. Now, Mike Witt, he's won three in a row, four of his last five, to even his record at six and six. Stays right with him. Now, as Witt throws a strike, Molitor fouls it off, and the count remains at three and two. Crowd still coming in here on this early start at Anaheim Stadium. It has been warm in Southern California. Very slight breeze, and that's high atop the stadium blowing out. Since they have enclosed Anaheim Stadium, boy, they have knocked out whatever breeze that the players could expect. Curveball, good one, got him swinging. Batting second, number well, one. Well, Mike went, one, went with off. one fastball that after the right. other, and after Molitor had fouled off about six or seven fastballs, here comes Uncle Charlie, Yacker, Yellowhammer. Well, that is a nasty pitch right there. Oh, he's got a dandy. Now that will bring on the shortstop, Ernie Riles hitting 278 with a pair of home runs and 19 RBIs. That fastball just inside. George Bamberger described Riles as a young Cecil Cooper in the sense of using the entire field while hitting. He has good bat control. He adjusts well to different pitchers. And that is off of the glove of Boone, the count 2-0. Well, if he's going to be another Cecil Cooper, that young man's got a pretty good career in store for him. That puts a lot of heat on young players when they come up. It's like Kirk Gibson was going to be another Mickey Mantle. Yeah, that's right. Kind Frank Howard. Tough, tough to fill those shoes. Frank Howard going to be another Babe Ruth. That's a little high, and the count, 3-0. Frank Howard, of course, now a coach with the Milwaukee Brewers. Managed the Padres several years ago. The Dodger Rookie of the Year in 1960. And you played with him, Don. Oh, yeah. That fastball is taken low and inside. There's Big Hondo, as they call him. So Riles is aboard, and that'll bring on Batting Cecil third, Cooper. Number 15, first baseman, Cecil Cooper. There's Cecil Cooper hitting 308 with four home runs and 48 RBIs. You see right there as the player moves out of the way, Frank Howard down the dugout, the hitting instructor for the Milwaukee Brewers. Coop hitting 308, four home runs, 48 RBIs. That curved ball in and over, and the count is 0-1. Cooper, of course, throughout his career has used the entire ballpark, and when he's doing just that, he is a much better hitter. A lot of opposing pitchers, Timmy, will like to see him try and pull that ball all the time. That's it to left field. Giving ground is Downing right there. And that is out number two. 
when you think about it, Don, what successful hitters in the major leagues Betting now are strictly pull hitters? Number nine well, team. You're going to see the home run, run hitters, so-called home run hitters, and uh -huh. what we have of those in the major leagues today. But you're right. To be successful, you've got to use both lines. Your pitchers will not let you pull the ball and be successful consistently. No, that's exactly right. Once that word gets out, why well, all of a sudden there definitely becomes a stereotype way to pitch that hitter. Here's Robin Yount in left field. Robin's had that bad arm and he's been out in the outfield. It's about all year. As Witt delivers outside, Robin at 286 home runs, 36 RBIs. On deck you have Ted Simmons. You see how the shadows have moved and kind of engulfed big Mike Witt out there on the mound. The sensei, the only man in the complete shade at third. That curveball, he could not. Did he hold up or not? Yes, he did not. As home plate umpire Dale Cousins, kind of a slow delay eighth inning call right there on a hot day. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking ball is in the dirt. It appeared that Robin did come too far. Looks like Mike Witt's a type of pitcher that you can run on, even though the Milwaukee Brewers are not a running ball club. Molitor has stolen 17 bases. Riles had good stats in the minor leagues. He had 21 stolen bases a couple of years ago. And the man at the plate, Robin Yount, will run if he has to. Mm -hmm. Robin with six. They only have 43 stolen bases on the year, and Molitor and Yount have 23 of those. Yount, I mentioned before, out in left field, and he will play that with the same aggressiveness that he did at shortstop. That's low. So what kind of staggering and opening up quite a bit on that breaking pitch, and when you do that with that left shoulder, boy, that is going to carry you outside, and you'll be there all day long. Now, there's a lot of Kentucky windage in hitting and pitching. And, yes, Jimmy, we've is. talked about it so many times, such a parallel between the two. Robin Yana guy really keeps that front side closed, a closed stance. Look at that front shoulder. That's out of play, and the count two and two. Well, that's exactly what you would call that stance of Yount's, a closed stance, no question about that. Robin, when he's hitting right, and he will drive the ball well to the opposite field. Reggie Jackson in right, straight away and deep. Yount with good power. There's Riles at first, and they will chase him back with a toss. A lot of managers run on this count, two, two, and two out. But if it's a ball on Robin Yount, the runner's compelled to run anyway. I do not think this is a good running count, but a lot of guys do it. You're taking a gamble on one pitch is what you're doing. There's right. the ball. And it's now three and two. So the full count, two outs, and Riles will be off with the pitch. I think a lot of time you're going to see somebody run. You start them off either right away. You maybe a 1-0 count, a 2-1 count. There goes the runner, and the curve ball gets him looking. Yeah, knew it. He just throws a bat away, and that will do it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left after the first half inning of play. It's Milwaukee nothing, and the California Angels coming up. We go to the bottom half of the first inning. It'll be Carew, it'll be Downing and Jackson in that order. As you look at Cecil Cooper over at first base, looking at the defensive cutarounds, Timmy. Uh huh. Jim Gantner will be the second baseman. Jimmy, a real gamer. Of course, Cecil Cooper is also. Jim Gantner, a very, very valuable man. Ernie Riles, the shortstop. There's Ernest. And Paul Molitor coming back from the operated operation that we talked about in the top half of the inning. In left field, Robin Yount, MVP shortstop of the world with the American League champion Brewers back in 82. Rick Manning, the center fielder. Rick coming over from Cleveland, of course. And Ben Ogilvie, gentle Ben in right field. Charlie Moore will be behind the plate. And Danny Darwin. 
who came to the Milwaukee Brewers in a four-way deal between Kansas City, the Mets, Milwaukee, and the Texas Rangers. Six and eight on the year, a 3.74, his 18th start of the year. Lady and he has lost four in a row. First There's your angel Rob lineup. Carew. It'll be Carew, Downing, and Jackson, the top three. The middle three of Jones, DeSensei, and Gritch. And the bottom three of Will Fong, Boone, and Schofield. Now Rod Carew to lead it off. Hitting 268 with a home run and 23 RBIs. Rod has a three-game hitting streak going for him. Molitor shortens up at third onto the grass. Cooper kind of shading his eyes at first, looking up, checking that sun. As we mentioned before, the tough sun field, right field, this time of day here at Anaheim Stadium. Now Danny Darwin ready to go to work and delivers outside. Darwin, at times as you watch him throw, that's taken down low. The Darwin is basically, I, I think he's more effective as a sinker ball type pitcher, and he does so many things to eliminate that. That's high and away. He's a straight up and down pitcher. And when you get a straight up and down pitcher who should be a sinker ball pitcher, boy, you're talking about a head-on collision. And right there, four pitches in Carew's aboard. A pitcher like that, Don, does not give the lower part of his Nine body seconds, a chance to five. help him out. Left fielder, if you Brian look at some of the great Downing. pitchers, Tom Seaver, a great example, how he pushes off that back right leg. But as you mentioned, Danny Darwin pitches with that stiff back leg, and really it's a very difficult thing to keep that ball down. Now here's Brian Downing with a five-game hitting streak. You see Brian average up to 226, and you say, well, wait a minute, what about that? Well, that's not bad for what Brian was a little while ago. Still Mr. Quiet. He's been in a slump since May. And at one time, he was four for 62. So that will tell you a little bit about why 226 sounds quite refreshing for Brian Downing. But it kind of tells you what Gene Mock feels about Brian Downing, too, because not a lot of guys are given the opportunity to go four for 62. No, right? that's right. <laughs> if you do, it will be in another classification. That's correct. Now they'll keep Carew close. Downing with a five-game hitting streak. And Reggie Jackson on deck. That's high. One ball and one strike. Well, if you wouldn't know any better, you would. it's almost like that Darwin's pitching with a corset on. Like there was something wrong with him. Bad lower back is what it looks like. That's that strange two-fold pitching movement from the stretch. Watch how he kicks out that left leg and then goes home. Now the count of ball and two strikes. As far as I know, he's not pitching with the corset on. Though. No, no. I, I'm just saying that that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. The Angels have had 51 sacrifice hits from a total of 13 different players and of course Gene Mock using that quite well to his advantage a ball and two strikes account that's just another facet of the game in many and many teams that's fouled away and the count remains one and two almost a lost start there's a little general he says that defense is the manager's domain. Boy, he is the best defensive manager I've ever seen. His primary criticism is that he carries that over to the offensive part of the game and with that bun in the early innings. But I think he's changed a little bit. He's certainly... It's never been a well, he has done that, and I think... He's really sat back, and I think possibly the year off had a chance to and get out of that everyday grind of managing. And boy, that can wear on you at times like nobody's business. Just look at it from a different aspect, from the press box, from a box seat, from wherever. That's fouled away, and the count remains at a ball and two strikes. So Gene took a two-year sabbatical, right? That's about it, and he turned around and 
Got to know some of the younger players in the organization. Got to watch the veteran players here. And then all of a sudden, back at the helm once again. A ball and two strikes. There's nobody out. No score in the ball game. As Downing goes down on strikes. And Reggie Jackson will come on. But let's go to yesterday. Watch where this pitch is to Reggie Jackson. And this was against the Boston Red Sox. And watch what he does with it. This is what is amazing because it'll still show you the strength of Reggie. High. And just turns those hands over, Timmy. Uh-huh. Yeah, we were talking that up and down is not necessarily important with a guy like Jackson in our pregame comments, but when you're talking about a guy like Jackson, he is completely different. You've got to talk about the normal hitters. <laughs> That's it to Gantner. Could be two. They will take Carew. They will double up Jackson, and that'll do it. So the side is retired. We're through one. No score. We'll return to ABC's Monday Night Baseball after this message and a word from our local station. <laughs> As we go to the top of the second inning, there's no score in the ball game. It'll be Ted Simmons, Ben Ogilvy, and Jimmy Gantner in that order to face the right-hander Mike Witt. Simmons hitting 257, five home runs, 39 RBIs. Ted has a five-game hitting streak going for him. Veteran left hand, well, actually veteran switch hitter. And since coming over to the Brewers, and especially the last year or so, been primarily the designated hitter, but he has been at first base every now and then. Owen won the count. That curveball down low. He's had six hits in his last 13 at bats with 15 total bases. Well, the Brewers list three catchers, but one's on the DL now. Schrader is on the DL. Charlie Moore, the regular catcher. That's it hard. Rob Wilfong on the big hop. He goes on to Carew, one away. And that'll bring on Ben Ogilvy. Adding six. I'll tell you, Don, speaking of Ted ben Simmons, Ogilvy. you do not see too many catchers who have caught for many, many years and then go to the other league and become a DH because usually the wear and tear of the catching position will whittle away that arm strength, but it's a tribute to Ted Simmons that he, he's still able to DH. Ted really needing now one more at bat to reach 8,000 in his career. That is outside Ogilvy, and the count 1-0, Benji at 246. Three home runs, 23 RBIs. You see what he's done against Witt. That's line to left, and that's going to be a base hit. Brian Downing will come on and play it on a hop. So the Brewers pick up their first hit of the evening. That's the first hit of the ball game for either side, and it'll bring on seven, Jimmy Gantner. 17, second baseman, Jim Gantner. Gantner hitting 262, three home runs, 29 RBIs, as you see Oglevy at first. Gantner, well, he's in another one of those classified columns that I like to use kind of the Muggsy type player he'll get down he'll rub his nose right in the dirt for you <laughs> boy I tell you he's tough he'll battle you all the way curve ball inside almost ticked him on that back foot and maybe it did it did so again they're hit with a breaking pitch now you just said he'd take one for the team and he's up there <laughs> doing it that curveball just kept coming, and Jim obviously was into his stride, and the ball just hit him on the foot. If you're going to take one for the team, you want to do it in that capacity, or in that fashion, I should say. <laughs> now runs at first and second, runners, and that will be bring on Charlie Moore, who's hit safely in eight of nine ball games, hitting 246, 17 RBIs. Charlie, or is a catcher? Then all of a sudden moved to the outfield and did an excellent job. Bounce to DeSense, foul. Charlie, he will tell you defensively that his arm feels better now than it's ever felt. There's a National League score. Cincinnati won to nothing over the Mets in the second inning. 
and the Dodgers two to one over Pittsburgh in the second inning. One of the big reasons Charlie said that his arm felt a lot better is he had a couple of years playing the outfield and he had a chance to stretch that arm out. That's an important thing that catchers do not do. They have to throw it back to the pitcher and throw to second base and rarely have a chance to stretch it out. And those two, two years in right field helped Charlie a great deal. That curveball in and over. And the count 0 and 2. Boy. Dale Murphy, a two run homer in that ball game. Atlanta on top of Montreal, 5 to nothing in the third inning down in Georgia. Oglevy at second base with Jimmy Gantner at first. And the count 0 and 2 to Charlie Moore with Rick Manning on deck. Just got a piece of the breaking pitch. The count remains 0 and 2. American League in the third inning. Tigers 3 to 1 over the White Sox. Carlton Fisk has accounted for the White Sox run. Larry Herndon is over for the Tigers. Cleveland 1 to nothing over Texas in the second inning. The 0 2 pitch to Charlie Moore. Good curveball. For Witt, his third strikeout. And all have been on curveballs. Number 22. Two, three, two curveballs. One to Molitor and one to Robin Young. Boy, he has a vicious downer. You don't see too many pitchers with that type rotation on their breaking ball, D. I don't think you see many, any pitchers in either league right now with that, that good a curveball when he is right. The last guy that I can think of hitting off of from the right side was Sad Sam Jones. There's the breaking pitch to Manning for the strike. And I'll tell you, he'd make you want to just get on your hands and knees and crawl home. <laughs> <laughs> he was that way when you caught him, too, and you knew it was coming. Oh, what a curveball. And a variation of curveball. Uh-huh. And the ever-present toothpick in the mouth, right? Yep. <laughs> what a sad Sam. What a guy he was. Manning takes the breaking pitch low. Hitting 248 with five RBIs. But here's a classic example right now. It's been nothing but breaking pitches. And you wonder when he goes back to get his fastball, what it's going to take away from him, whether it's this start, next start, or two or three starts from now. You just can't keep tricking him with a curveball. Not if your breaking ball has the element of. There's the runner at second base in Ogilvy. And over at first base, you'll see Jimmy Gantner. There's two outs. We're in the top of the second inning. No score. If your curveball's a deceiving curveball and you keep throwing it, well, then there's less deceit in it. Stands to reason, right? I would think so. But there's a fastball off of the glove of Boone. So the big thing right here that you can just see that you say to yourself, which is easier to control, the curveball or the fastball? Well, they're going to give Witt a wild pitch right there. And Bob Boone, as you see, I was in the Angel Clubhouse today, and Bob had his left knee under the ice and under the wraps. And Booney does not have the mobility that he once had, but technically that could have been a pass ball. They have a count three and one to Manning. He right there, two hits in his 19 at bats with his last 19 at bats with runners in scoring position. George Bamberger hopes that'll improve here. That is fouled away in the count three and two. On deck, the leadoff hitter, Paul Molitor. I'll tell you, everything that pitchers used to, to do, D, came off the fastball, but the game has changed. It's almost re in reverse now. And I know that's the way it is in the American League. They're setting up the fastball with breaking stuff. And it's not necessarily for the betterment of pitching either. I, I agree with you. That's what's amazing. They're still the best pitch in fastball, it, or baseball, is your fastball. And boy, somewhere along the line, that chapter has been stuck on the shelf to some of these major league pitchers. Rob Wilfong will go to Carew. And the side retired, no runs a hit. Two left, and we're through one and a half from the big day in Anaheim. It's the Brewers nothing, and the Angels nothing. As you see, no score in the bottom of the second inning. And it'll be Rupert Jones to lead it off. Jones, DeSensei, and Gritch in that order. 
Rupert. Boy, what an acquisition for the California Angels. Hitting 275, 14 home runs, 39 RBIs. Right now, in the midst of a nine-game hitting streak, he had his second two-home run game of the season yesterday. And that's hit deep right center. Manning way back to the wall. This ball is gone. Jones with two home runs in yesterday's game against the Red Sox and he picks up right where he left off a breaking ball from Danny Darwin and Rupert looks like he was looking for that pitch if he wasn't looking for it he adjusted rather well <laughs> and if he was looking for it he got it that's right well, 15, not 15 home runs for Rupert Jones I say, that is a man for a man who they just picked up that's all and to tell you a little more, bit more about Jones, as DeSensei takes low 1-0, the Angels on top 1-0, Jones has now reached base 11 consecutive times, one shy of the Angel team record. That is well right center, but Manning is there to run it down. Will do so. And there's one away, Manning and here's six. Bobby Gritch. Number four. Designated hitter. Well, the man that he has Bobby won behind, Gritch. as far as the Angels is concerned, is the man coming to the plate right now in Bobby Gritch. That was set last year. The Major League record is 16. And by Ted Williams. Not a bad hitter. Mm. Here's Bobby Gritch. He's sporting a nine game hitting streak. Hitting 262. Takes a strike 0 and 1. Gritch with four home runs, 25 RBIs. Bobby likes this ballpark. He hits well in this ballpark because for the fact that Gritch, when he's hitting right, will use the entire ballpark also, and he has the power to reach those right field seats. He even uses the old, old the uh, ballpark, all of the ballpark defensively too. He's played first, second, third. There's the strike, and the count goes to two and two. As I mentioned before, Bobby's hit safely in nine straight ball games. Originally drafted by the Orioles back in 67, one of the hot hitters, as you can see last week, 478. Out of play, the count remains at two balls and two strikes with Rob Wilfong on deck. Bobby in his 14th full season in the major leagues. And He has always been a hard nose type player. Down the right side foul. Playing better defense right now, he says, compared to the last previous year or two. And one of the reason being, he said, oh, for so many years, when the ball was hit, he'd go after the ball running straight up and down. He now stays down and he sees the ball much better. He glides. That's hit to right field. Oglevy fighting that sun right there. And there's two gone. And of course, that is just, that stands the reason. Stay down, you can move and flow much better. And Gritch doing just that. Batting seven. There's two gone to Wilfong. Rob Second hitting 182, baseman. three home runs and Rob 10 RBI. Wilfong. Molitor up on the grass at third. Darwin missing outside in the count 1-0. Oh. Molitor up on the grass, and usually with two out and nobody on, you're not looking for the buck. That's it, deep right center field. Manning going back to the warning track to the wall. This ball is gone. Brewers are wishing that Rob Wilfong would have bunted then. How about that? His fourth home run of the year. He only had nine coming into this year, and he's had four already. We're not into the all-star break. That breaking ball, a little lazy breaking ball. 
a roller. Uh huh. The action stopped on the spin, and Will Fong took over from there. It's like hitting it off a tee, D. That's exactly right. As Bob Boone comes on, there's a breaking pitch outside. Now, Booney, a little different stance, Timmy. Yeah, he's got that wide open stance. Moose Stubing, the third base coach, has helped him with it. And he just picks his left foot up and puts it right back down. There's a strike to Boone, two and one to count. Bob at 253, three home runs, 26 RBIs. Jamzeem pushes it to the right side. Gantner to Cooper. And the Angels are gone, but not before they pick up two runs on two hits, two home runs, one by Jones, one by Wilfong. There's no errors, and nobody left on base. So we're through two from the big end in Anaheim, and right there, the Angels leading Milwaukee by a score of two to nothing. Now that's the story as we go to the top half of the third. The Angels on top two to nothing. Home runs by Jones and Will Fong in the second inning. That's the third time that the Angels the have had two run homers third in an inning this year. Monitor. And it'll go to the top of the order for the Brewers. It'll be Molitor, Riles, and Cooper here in the top of the third. Molitor struck out his first time at bat. Witt has struck out three, walked one. He's allowed one single, one out single by Ogilvy in the second. All in one to count. Brewers, a tough team to play catch up. Molitor leads the Brewers in home runs with seven. It's a far cry from the 200 home runs they had back in 1982. 0-2 oh, the count. Of course, Yount had a banner year back in 82. Now they've only hit 40 this year. Gene Mock moving one of his in, trying to get Will Fong's attention. Now Carew yelling at him, saying, come on over here. Will Fong moves about three steps to his left with the count 0-2. Remains no balls and two strikes. How about the production they got in 1982 from their first three hitters? Robert Yount with 210 hits, Cooper had 205, and Molitor 201. What a ball club that was. Yes, it was. And that's exactly why they were in the World Series. Together, they scored 369 runs that year. 40% of the Brewers' runs were scored by three guys. A ball and two strikes account. Pull left side. There is Schofield. Got to hurry. Man, they can't get him. Once he double clutched, they lost it. Shortstop. Well, a good breaking ball from Mike Witt. And you see the sensei cutting in front of Schofield. And the double clutch, as you said, you're rarely given an error. Now watch. The double clutch right there. And Molitor is safe. You rarely give an error to somebody when they double clutch, but technically it should be an error because they don't come up cleanly with the ball. That's all that Molitor needed going down the line. He has good speed, and here's Ernie Riles. He walked his first time at bat. Even though the difficulty of the play has something to do with it, and that was a tough play for Schofield. There's his strike with a fastball. But on the other hand, just the bang-bang play, as much as he was safe, if he doesn't double clutch, it's bang-bang and he's out. That's right. And this is the big leagues, right? That's exactly <laughs> right. Let's see, it was when we came to the ballpark today. Let's <laughs> <laughs> Hard and foul. Hung him a curveball. It's really quite easy to see why Witt would be a little cons inconsistent with his fastball and his curveball. He's not taking that full turn as he makes his turn. When you watch him, he just gets about halfway and then he's out square-shouldered at the hitter. 
a pitcher has to be just, just like a golfer making a shoulder turn. And a, a pitcher has to do the same thing. When you take the club head back in, call, in golf, you got to make that shoulder turn. And the same way with a pitcher. You've got to make that full shoulder turn and then come back and let the entire body catch up and make everything go in synchronization. That's it to Will Fong. He goes to Schofield. They double him up. Good turnover by Schofield. So there's two outs. And that will bring on Cecil Cooper. Cooper flying to left. His first, first time at bat. Cecil Will Fong really Cooper. gave Schofield a good ball to handle toward the outside part of the bag and Schofield cheating well at second base turned it nicely. 4-6-3 double play is not an easy double play to turn. Not at all and especially when you've got the speed of Riles and you've got the speed of Molitor bearing down on Schofield at short. Mm. Here's Cecil Cooper. And that's it. Deep center field, Rupert Jones turns his back to home plate, back to the wall, and this ball is gone. And Coop knew it as soon as he hit it. You're saying he got into his home run, run trot in a hurry, huh? As soon as he started to leave the batter's box. Robin. This ball down and in. We talked about that ball down and in earlier in our pregame remarks. And it's not down and in for long. Cooper showing unusual power to center field. He's usually, if he's going to hit the ball out, that's his first home run against right-handed pitching this year. That's amazing as Robin Yount fouls the first pitch away. Watch Jones again here. See how close he gets to that ball think Gary Pettis catches that ball? Well, I don't know. It depends on how far it was over the wall. He goes up. Well, Gary Pettis has made some incredible oh, catches in this ballpark. Down fouls that pitch away and the count is 0-2. Gene Mock is hoping that Gary Pettis will be back and ready to go after the All-Star break. What he did, he dove for a ball in Kansas City at Royal Stadium and rolled on his wrist, rolled it underneath of him. So he's been out. Watching him, he's still throwing every day, but he has somebody catching the ball and then giving it to him to throw. That curveball is down low, one and two. One ball and two strikes. Don, I understand it's a similar injury that happened, or the way it happened, happened to Daryl Strawberry of the Mets. Of course, Strawberry ends up with a pulled ligament in his right thumb. And Gary Pettis, thankfully, as far as the Angels are concerned, it is a severe sprain, and actually the burn on it when he rubbed across that artificial surface, really. Hmm. Yes, sir, as Yount goes down. Well, the Brewers are gone. A run on two hits, no airs, and they leave nobody. We're through two and a half at the Big A in Anaheim, two to one, California. That's the story as we go to the bottom of the third inning. And for California, it'll be Dick Schofield. He'll be followed by Rod Carew, the leadoff hitter, and then Brian Downing. Let's see, Milwaukee, their bullpen. Bob Euchre is not there, no. But Bob Euchre is sitting with us in the booth. Robert, good to have you here, babe. It's really a thrill for me. I can't hear you guys too good because I don't have the regular headsets on like you do. I don't know why they didn't give them to me, but it's okay. Schofield. As the count, one ball and one strike. Well, the, the, they're talking about the pitchers out in that bullpen. Of course, with nobody out there, they will sit out there and they'll get a good look at the... Hi, everybody. Get, <laughs> I used to be a regular here. <laughs> That's out of play. The count, one and two. Talking about here in Anaheim? <laughs> no. No. Not on the field. Boy, this is really great to be with you. He used guys. to take care great. of the booth when I worked out here. This is great. <laughs> I did. Every time Donnie leave, I pick up all the paper and stuff. This is great. I love this. This is great. Well, you've seen him right here on ABC, Mr. Belvedere, the serial here on the show on ABC. 
And that's it in the center field. Shallow center. Manning is right there. Bobby, congratulations, uh, because I understand the show has First been baseman. picked up, has been renewed uh, again, and starting another season pretty soon. Yeah, we're coming back out in the fall, Don, and I'm, I'm real happy about it. I really am. Uh, you know, as I've told you many times before, baseball is my first love you know I, I love this this game but uh, I'm also very excited about the series uh, also starring Christopher Hewitt and Eileen Graff and Tracy Wells and Bryce Beckham and Rob Stone I mean they're great kids too and I'm really looking forward to going back here's Rod Carew that's it high to right Ogilvy right there now fighting the center a little bit but Benji's there and there's two gone it'll bring on Brian Downing when Will I be on longer than the third? This is really going Love fast. When, Brian <laughs> when do you start? It has got to you, hasn't it, Hollywood? Will I be on longer than the third? <laughs> 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 oh, we start again in August, Don. August the 12th, I, I believe we go back. Uh, the rest of the cast uh, will come in sometime in December. I'll be doing all my stuff by myself. <laughs> is that it? Well, you usually do your stuff by yourself. It you got better. that right. <laughs> Brian Downing struck out his first time at bat. Is it because you're nervous around the cast or they just feel you're better off working by yourself? No, I, I don't like makeup people and I have a bad habit of holding my breath, which makes my face red and they don't like that. Especially for color TV, and that's one of the things we have to fight now. Well, that's one of our problems over there. It's a low-budget show. That's not true. It's a good show. Do you think anybody, you has ever gone from donning catching gear to makeup? Well, there have been a few guys that have done that, and I don't guess we can go into that here. <laughs> the two unfit. That's outside the count three and one. Duke, we were talking about Danny Darwin. He's lost four in a row, and I told Timmy Pryor, I said, if I didn't know better, you would almost swear that he's got a corset on, as, as stiff as he is with that lower back. Has he been like that all year? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that when we come back. With the two outs, as Molitor goes to Cooper. So that will do it. The Angels are gone here in the third. We're through three from the Big A in Anaheim. It's California two and Milwaukee one. Tonight's game is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports and is being brought to you by Strohs and Strohlite, the circle of sports beer. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Strohs and Strohs Light, the circle of sports beer. As we go to the top of the fourth, it'll be Simmons, Oglevy, and Gantner. As Bob Euchre has joined us in the booth, Simmons bounced the second his first time in the bat at, at bat. No, we're talking about Danny Darwin, you uh, prior to that. And I know you're going to be around here, but I was just wondering, uh, what, has he had a back problem? He a little bit on and off done it. I'll tell you, the big problem with Darwin is, has been his breaking ball. You know, he falls behind. He's all of a sudden kind of fallen in love with the breaking ball. He's got a good fastball, but he falls behind with the breaking stuff and more often than not then has to come in. And that's really been his problem. He's lost his last four times out. He pitched well early in the season, but he's really struggled lately. And he doesn't wear a corset. No, I didn't figure he did. But Leotards, <laughs> but he doesn't. <laughs> That's low. The count, two balls and a strike. Simmons, right now, as he stands at the plate, his appearance, 8,000. Boy, that is a lot. I wanted to mention one thing before I get away with you two guys here. I heard you in the last inning talking about Mike Witt squaring up his shoulders and everything. You should be giving a little instruction to our hitters, too, to square around or do something. <laughs> and you said Will Fong cheated at second base. You call him Mr. Uberoth as soon as I get back to our booth. I That's a baseball term. I never figured this would happen to two of my best friends. I love these guys. There's a line drive, looping line in left center. Jones coming on as he has to play it on a hop. And Simmons has a leadoff single as we go to the top of the fourth inning. And it'll bring on Ben Ogilvy. Not right again, though. It's really, really great seeing you two guys. You and uh, Tim McCarver. And thank Timmy for all the days when I couldn't catch at St. Louis. He kept me in the big leagues the whole year. <laughs> you know, all them guys, they talk about wanting to go out there and play every day. I never wanted to do that. And thanks to Tim McCarver, I didn't have to do that. The more I played, the closer I was going back to the minor leagues. <laughs> Timmy, thanks a lot. Very touching thought. Thanks. Well, it's really great. I want to get Jerry Klein back in here. Look at all these big league stats. We don't have that on radio next door. <laughs> Boy, this guy is something. Uke, it's great to see you. Take care, babe. Thanks, Donnie. All right. Bob Euchard, and you'll catch him again this fall on Mr. Mr. Belvedere. Right here on ABC. Ogilvy. 
With the count, one ball and no strikes. Take care, Yuki. Oh, what a dandy. He is what a beauty. a beauty. <laughs> As Oglevy singled his first time at bat, has the count, one ball and no strikes account. Simmons a tying run at first base. The Angels on top by a score of two to one. Ball taken low. Don Oak will be a good low ball hitter and he pulls the ball also. It's a little surprising to see Rod Carew holding Simmons on at first base in a one run ball game. You would not figure Simmons to run at all. And if you're going to throw that breaking ball a lot, as Witt has been inclined to do, Ogilvy could pull the ball in that hole down there. But he pulls it to Will Fong. Should be two. Schofield for one, and they double him up. Well, the Angels, with their second double play of the night, that is number 113 on the year. Boy, you think that isn't pitcher's best friend. Lonnie Smith with a two-run homer as Kansas City leads the Yankees two to nothing. And Necro, he's passed Bob Gibson on the all-time strikeout list. We'll get and update those numbers for you. As Jimmy Gantner stands in, I know whatever it's going to be, it's going to be a bunch. And is pulled to the right side. Nice big hop for Will Fong. The turn to get him. And just like that, the Brewers are gone. No runs on a hit. We're through three and a half from the Big A in Anaheim, where the Angels lead the Brewers two to one. This is Al Troutwig in New York. In Atlanta, the Braves are trying to snap a five-game losing streak. And Dale Murphy started things off on the right foot in the first inning with a two-run shot. Since then, the Braves have blasted Bill Gullickson. And in the fifth, Atlanta leads Montreal 7-0. Back to Anaheim. As we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Reggie Jackson, Rupert Jones, and Doug DeSensei with the Angels on top two to one here at the Big A in Anaheim. It's warm, it's muggy, it's been sultry. And that's about the gist of it here in Southern California. Just plain hot. But we talked about it before since they enclosed Anaheim Stadium here, which will now seat 60,000 plus, the home of the Angels and the Los Angeles Rams. Well, that has knocked whatever breeze you used to get in here completely away, Timmy. But it's a beautiful ballpark, no question about it. That's just outside, and the count, a ball and a strike. Daryl Cousins is the home plate umpire. John Shulock at first, Tim Welke at second, and John Hirschbeck over at third, the men in blue here tonight. That's outside, and the count goes to two and one. Reggie and Rupert Jones play a little game of long ball in batting practice every day. And Reggie says that carries over to the game. Reggie with 13 home runs and Rupert with 15. Kind of healthy competition, isn't it? It's very nice in-house play, I'm sure of that. That's out of play. He was on that ball pretty good. And just did miss it. A change, he got it up over the plate. 116 career home runs. He's only five behind Ted Williams and Willie McCovey. Matter of fact, he passed McCovey yesterday in RBIs. Reggie's saying just one more of those, please. Now Reggie's homered the last two days. Jams him with that fastball. There's Cooper. He'll go to the bag, and he does it himself. Jackson going hard down the line. Rupert Jones. Let's take a look at the motion here of Danny Darwin. You see how stiff legged that back leg is till he gets out there, and then more of a straight up and he hits that leg and he's straight up and down. Now, the only thing that moves that ball in and out there actually is the arm. He had it right into the hands of Jackson that time. Danny has, Danny has not had any major arm problems throughout his career, but throwing like that, you would think that that would be one of the results of throwing like that, dude. Oh, you would think so. Here's Rupert Jones. 
See right there, 11 consecutive times he's been on base. He pops that one foul and back out of play. Homer, his first time at bat, that extended his hitting streak to 10 games. His 15th home run of the year, RBI number 40. Rupert, a straightaway hitter. Good power the other way, and the Brewers have him shaded to pull. He is not a pull hitter. Goes through that fastball in the count one and two. No, sir, he has power to all parts of the ballpark. He had 12 home runs for the world champion Tigers last year. This is his sixth major league club. To the hole, there is Cooper. He will go to Darwin. And Jones is retired, two gone. So he falls one short of the Angel Club record for consecutive times on base. That was 12 by Bobby Gritch last year. Jones, 11. And Doug DeSensei stands in. kind of plagued with that bad back through the years has had muscle spasm stiffness there's a lot of stretching that's just outside and the count one and all but if that is not the extra enough of the extracurricular activity for the sensei think about what he has to do after the game and he will he'll lie in a bed of ice mm -hmm. the story the Angels on top two to one the two hits two home runs coming in the second inning one by Jones and one by Will Fong. that's out of play the count two balls and a strike Don one of your old teammates Mari Wills when he went to the Pittsburgh Pirates in the late 70s after a game he would sit on a block of ice to protect those legs hamstrings and the front parts of quads so there must be something to that the general yes sir gene mock for so many years war number four <laughs> story behind that is when he came over here to manage he said bobby gritch wears number four and he's not even going to ask him to for that number so he has switched to number three well he said he told me too he said he made all the all the Gehrig fans mad at him, so now he'll make all the Ruth fans mad at him. <laughs> there is Bamberger, Howard. That's wide at third. Look at the play by Molitor. Gets up and throws him out. Fine play by Paul Molitor, and the Angels go one, two, three in the fourth inning. So we're through four right here at the Big A in Anaheim, and let's take another peek at it as we move on out. Great play by Molitor. Molitor diving, and how he can get up and throw a strike and get him by four feet. Hmm. We'll return after this message and news headlines from our local station. He recently had told me, he says, well, he said, I'd like for you to be our backup catcher to Bill Schroeder. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll do that for you if uh, only if you don't forget that, that I'm an outfielder, you know, because I thought I had established myself as a pretty good outfielder over the two years or three years I was out there. And uh, he said, well, well, we'll have to work on that and see what happens during spring training. So in spring training, uh, uh, most of my work was done behind the plate because they wanted me to work on my skills again behind the plate. And uh, and I think I uh, worked pretty hard and kept my mind right. And, uh, and I think I've helped the club a lot this season. Charlie Moore with a count of ball and a strike. And indeed, that man can help a ball club. He did a whale of a job moving to the outfield. And I'll tell you another spot that where Charlie Moore was such an influence, especially in that pennant winning year. The way that he could move the ball behind the runner, Timmy. Uh -huh. Oh boy, I'll tell you. He also said the adjustment from the outfield back behind the plate was easier with the Brewer staff because they had a lot of control pitchers. And with the exception of Jaime Kokenauer, who can overpower you. The adjustment was made easy because of that. The count, two balls and two strikes. I'll tell you, I went from behind the plate to first base in 1973, Don, and I find my, found my mind wandering. When you're behind the plate, your mind does not have a chance to wander. 
No, that's true. You're in on all the action. The 2-2 pitch. That's on that outside corner. And Daryl Cousins rings him up. Second time that Moore struck out. Center fielder. That's number five for Whip. And it'll bring on Rick Manning. Their other catcher, Bill Schroeder, has been on the disabled list for the second time this year. He's starting to hit a little bit right now. As Manning tries to bunt his way on, cannot do it. The count is 0-1. Had an elbow problem. And just kind of very tenderly bringing that arm back into, condi into condition. Manning bounced to Wilfong at second his first time at bat. 0, 0 for 1. There's a good picture of Mike Witt. There's a curve. There's a good, there's a good angle right there. Andy Sedaris, our director and our producer Peter Lasser. You can see what I'm talking about if you watch that left shoulder of Witt's. He really never makes a full turn. All he does is kind of point it at the hitter. And see right there? And for a big man, that is really not enough. There, take a look. Now watch that left shoulder of Witt. He gets out there quick. And he really... Really doesn't have a trigger, does he? Not at all. Just no. like a hitter taking it back just a little bit. You don't really trigger your strength. That's right. He's fortunate that he's got a great arm. That's high left side. There's Schofield looking at DeSensei. DeSensei looking at Schofield, and Schofield says, I will take it. So there's two gone, and that will bring on Paul Molitor. Well, you find out when you do make that full shoulder turn that it's so much easier to get yourself into synchronization because the bigger you are, the more you can afford to take that shoulder turn and then get everything coiled and ready to go at the plate. If you think about how big that man is, what, he's six, seven, six, eight almost, uh -huh. and he made a big full turn, whoa, would he have some kind of deception coming at you. There's another good look at the big right-hander, but he's got great stuff. Good curveball. And because he's got great stuff, you don't see Bob Boone moving around behind home plate. He wants Mike Witt to pitch for the four corners, the two shoulders and the two knees, and let the action take care of everything. Mike he, is not a spot pitcher. He's got a good moving fastball, but not to say that someday he will not be. There you see the fastball. And of course, now when he gets way over on top, Where's that fastball going to be? It's going to carry him down low and away. And how many is he throwing? He's throwing probably five or six in that same general pattern so far this evening. There's your home run leaders on the Brewers. There's a strike and the count one and two. The interesting thing about that graphic was Schroeder has only played 28 games and is tied with Molitor for the home run leadership of the Brewers. I mentioned before, Milwaukee this year has hit only 40. Off the end of the bat, right back to Witt. Picks it up, goes to Carew, and the Brewers are gone in the fifth inning. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We're at the halfway mark after four and a half. It's the Angels two and the Brewers one. the story the Angels leading Milwaukee two to one as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning and Bobby Gritch to lead it off it'll be Gritch Wilfong and Boone in that order Bobby flying to right his first time at bat one ball and one strike the count Pitch low, the count two and one. Two home runs for the Angels in this ball game, and Danny Darren has had problems with the home run ball all year long. He's given up 19. 
That's it, shallow right. Ogilvy started back. Now has to come in a hurry. He can't get it. Bob after the way. Great heads up. Goes to second. He's there. Ogilvy broke back. And then he broke in. And that sun really appeared to give him some problems in right field. There's his break back. Like and now by the time he turns it on... It's too late. He drops the ball. The ball comes right at his feet. And this ball hits Gritch in the foot. And when Bobby was going to make a move to third base, it looked like Ernest Riles popped him right there in the eye. Now Bobby got up. He knew that the ball had hit him somewhere. He thought about third. And all of a sudden, whoops, there's Riles right in his way. Bobby, former high school quarterback and a good one from Long Beach. <laughs> Gave him a little shoulder, but then all of a sudden he could not go anywhere. But that's the way that Bobby plays hard. There was nothing wrong with that. Just trying to get him out of the way. Right. He'll be credited with a double. And Rob Wilfong stands in. He doubled, or I should say he homered his first time at bat. There's a good bunt. Darwin's got a hurry. Ball starts to fall. Can't make a play. is no surprise that Will Fong is bunting. Gene Mock loves to bunt, and so does Will Fong. He led the AL in 79 with 22 bunt base hits. The catcher. Rob playing uh, long ball the first ooh. time at bat, and this is Gene Mock's little ball. And Danny Darwin cannot make the play. Hmm. Got hung up over there as he went to field the ball. Now the Angels have runners at the corner. Nobody out, and it'll bring on Bob Boone. the second his first time at bat so Gritch at third with Will Fong at first the fly ball lost in the sun by Ogilvy to give Gritch the double and now the bunt single as Darwin was off balance as he went to field the ball and Will Fong's at first inside one and oh Bobby Gritch taking a more cautious lead off a of third base than he did off a of second in yesterday's ball game, right? <laughs> well, the hidden ball trick was pulled on Bobby yesterday by Marty Barrett, the Red Sox second baseman. And Bobby ran off the field as fast as he could. That breaking pitch in and over. And the count one and one, he did it so fast people weren't sure what happened. He says, he said, I did it to, to avoid that much more embarrassment. That's right. <laughs> I said, don't feel bad. I told him today in the club, I said, the late Danny O'Connell, the infielder, did that to me in an old-timers game. <laughs> old-timers game? <laughs> oh, I said, right. Danny, Danny. <laughs> That's it. High left center. Yount is there. Has it, had it by an arm. Here comes Gritz. They're going to make him throw him out, and he will. Easy. Isn't that bad? As he just threw a strike to Charlie Moore. And we'll see if the Angels have run themselves out of an inning. Well, this is not deep. As a matter of fact, the shortstop, Ernie Riles, was back. He could have had a shot at it. Yount properly shortstop. makes the play Dick. and Scopia. throws out Rich easily from third base. Now, that would have been a much more reasonable play had there been one out. But oh, with yeah. nobody out, this is a very, very testy play. Rich trying to score, and he's out by six feet. Well, the thing that makes that a subject of conversation for the second guessers right now is the point that he was that shallow. Number two, he had to throw it all away on the air, and Rob Wilfong tagged and went to second base easily. So instead of two outs and a runner at second, conceivably, you could have had one out, runners at second and third. As Dick Schofield stands in. As it stands, you're going to need a base hit from your number nine hole hitter to score the runner from second. One ball and no strikes account. But in this game, is not hindsight the greatest sight of all? Mm -hmm. Boy. Schofield fly to center his first time at bat. There's a strike, and it's one and one. Well, when you make a play and you try to score a run from Yount being that shallow, Gene Mock and Moose Stubing and all the Angel coaches had to tell the guys, 
before the ball game that if you're on third base, less than two out, make you out, throw you out. And he just did it. The only case right there where you would have backed off of that a little bit would have been on your advanced scouting report. If they had have been watching Milwaukee for the last week or so, of course, they have got one of the best in the game in Cookie Rojas. One ball and one strike to count. That's it to right field. Ogilvy is there, makes the catch, and the side is retired. So the Angels do miss the opportunity. No runs on two hits. We're through five. Ladies Good to one, California. Boys, and we'll return to Monday Night Baseball Sunday after this word from our local station. Thanks to Well, right there, that is for the championship. The third championship game for Milwaukee USFL. The Oakland Invaders and the Baltimore Stars. That'll be live at 8 o'clock Eastern. That will be on Sunday. I hope you make your plans to be with us right here on ABC. As we go to the top of the sixth inning, it'll be Ernie Wiles. He pops it right side. Going out of Schofield. Lots of room. And one pitch and one out. So there's one out, and that'll bring on Cecil Cooper. First baseman, Cecil Cooper. Well, that USFL championship game will be coming to you on Sunday night from New Jersey. The Stars of Baltimore and the Invaders of Oakland, 8 o'clock Eastern. And just a reminder, we will not be with you next Monday night for ABC's Monday Night Baseball due to the All-Star break. But we'll be coming back your way on the 22nd. Here's Cecil Cooper as accounted for the only Milwaukee run with a towering home run to straightaway center field this fifth of the year RBI number 49. One ball and no strikes the count. Change look out by the diving Schofield that almost took wit with it. Now Cooper hits it hard and right back up the middle. I'd like to tore him off of the mound. Right back through the originator. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's what you like to see. A good hitter is a guy who will not let a home run make a home run hitter out of him. Cecil hits a home run, and the next time up, he comes back and ropes one through the middle. Great wrist, huh? Oh, he does. Now, Schofield, the little shook up at shortstop, but as the time was taken, kind of knocked the breath out from the little duck. That he's okay. Here's Robin Yount. Robin has struck out twice, once looking and once swinging. Now Carew holding Cooper over at first base. That's hit hard to the hole. Base hit left field. He hung him a curveball. Now Cooper to second. He will hold right there, and that'll bring on Ted Simmons. Now hit number six for the Brewers. They've out hit California 6-4, but the Angels on top 2-1. Hey, it's a lot different when you come up there the third time through the order. Robin Yon had struck out on two curveballs, and he came up looking for a curveball. As you see, New York had... Cincinnati 3-3 in the fifth. L.A. over Pittsburgh 4-3. That game in the fourth inning. Atlanta whacking up on Montreal 7-zip. Atlanta hoping it's not a game like Thursday night's ball game against <laughs> those Mets, huh? Here's Ted Simmons. He's one for two tonight. That's foul away. Well, the Expos went 19 last night. The Mets 19 the other night down in Georgia, <laughs> thinking about having a nice 4th of July. Of course, Tim, you were there. That had to be fun. Starting off with your fireworks show on July 4th, but really getting them July 5th, huh? July 5th, <laughs> 4 a.m. Oh, no. Man. That's it to right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Jackson might have a shot. Cooper, a late start. Throw to the plate. And they get it. Jackson headed right on the money. Great block by Boone. When Gene Mock 
took over the managing role of the Angels this spring. He said, I'm putting Reggie Jackson back in right field. Look at this throw by Reggie Jackson. So Reggie said, well, I hadn't played out there in a couple of years. So you got to really respect the guy because he went to Gary Pettis. He asked Gary a few things about playing defense on throwing and fielding. Pettis helped the older guy this time. Not too shabby. What a throw by Reggie Jackson. But watch the block by Boone. Now, this is what your department, Timmy. It's the toughest thing in the world to accept the throw from right field because when you turn around, you don't know where the runner is. And really, your weight's on your right foot. That means your left foot can be slapped out from under you. But Booney had the weight on the right foot, on the left foot, actually, then. Good play. Here's Ben Ogilvie as he takes his strike. Well, Yount ends up at third. Simmons at first. Good decoy by Rod Carew to hold Simmons right there. With Jimmy Gantner on deck. And it's a still two to one ball game. Inside and the count one and one. Yes, sir. Boone placed that left foot right at the corner of the plate. And as Cooper tried to make the hook slide, which would be in a runner's mind because he sees the catcher going up the first base side and he wants to hook away from him. All of a sudden he caught a shin guard and he bounced him right around the plate. Inside and the count two and one. A catcher never has a problem with the guy who's going to hook into him because what in effect it does is that left foot will get hung up and you can spin that runner out of there. The best way to go into a catcher a lot of times is inside the line, inside of home plate, because any good catcher, when he receives a throw from right field, he has his weight on his outside foot to ward off the runner to the outside. That's inside, three and one to Ogilvy. You see Yount at third, and Simmons at first. That's the story, top of the six, two out, two on for the Brewers. Three one pitch to Oglevy. And that's bounce foul. Came back with a three one breaking pitch and the count full three and two. So that'll send Simmons on his way with two outs from first. He right there, Witt's career marked 223 by the opponents. Two outs and runners on base. Gene Mock. Hands on his hips. He will pull for out number three right here. Now Simmons will go. Carew playing behind him. He goes. And it's ball four inside. So the Brewers have loaded the bases. They've had three base hits and a walk. And have yet to then Second home plate as Jimmy Gantner Jim comes on. That is the second. Walk issued by Mike Witt tonight. When Gander, you see, hit by the pitch, that was a curveball. Nicked him in the left shoe. And he bounced a second. And you've got Charlie Moore on deck. Curveball low. And now Bob Boone wants to talk to Witt. There are a lot of different ways of being wild. You said Mike Witt has walked only two, but he's run a lot of deep counts. And the deeper counts that you run, that means that the hitters are going to see more pitches. And this is the third time through the order. It's not that Mike Witt is getting that tired, but it's just that they take that fastball and they shorten it up a little bit. And they've also had, you'd love to know the ratio of curve balls as compared to fastballs. That's a fastball down and right at the feet. Well, Gantner hammers this ball right into his right ankle, it appeared. Breaking ball. Or no, it's fastball. But it did take a hop first. So those are not nearly as painful as the ones that come off the bat and whack you on the ankle. Now the count one ball and one strike. He's thrown 88 pitches. He's had seven three ball counts tonight. Mm -hmm. 
to the left side. Schofield on the big hop goes to Carew and the side retired. So the Brewers are turned away. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning of play. The Angels lead it two to one. Moments ago at Tiger Stadium in Detroit, the Chicago White Sox explode for six in the sixth. The big blast, Carlton Fisk's grand slam off Aurelio Lopez. Now in the seventh, the White Sox lead the Tigers eight to three. Meanwhile, moments ago, the fifth inning in Cincinnati. Pete Rose doubles home a run to give the Reds a 4-3 lead in the fifth. Pete Rose is now 36 hits away from Ty Cobb as Eddie Milner scores. Let's go back to Don Drysdale in Anaheim. And right here in Anaheim, Rod Carew to lead it off as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Carew, Downing, and Jackson in that order. Carew tonight has walked and he's flying to right. That's out of play. Pete Rose now 36 hits away from catching Ty Cobb or from passing Ty. And Rodney Klein, 22 hits from 3,000. And you talk to Rod about how do you want hit number 3,000? That's bounced back to Darwin. But I'll tell you about that. Rod says, I'd like to have it a base hit up the middle because that was the first one I ever got in the major leagues off Dave McNally or dropped down a bunt down the third baseline because he's always been noted for bunting and indeed he has. There's Cleveland four to nothing over Texas in the bottom of the fourth inning. Castillo homered, and right here, it's Minnesota 4, Baltimore 4, rain delay in the seventh inning. One going to Downing. He has struck out and bounced to third. 2-2 tie, seventh inning, Yankees and Royals. Two balls and no strikes account with Reggie Jackson on deck. You mentioned Carew's ability to bunt. In 1977, when he hit 388, he had 12 two-strike bunt base hits. <laughs> How to play right side. Oh, he used to do that so much. Boy, I'll tell you. And how he could handle that bat. I have, I have also read that after a couple of years, Rod wanted to quit baseball. And Billy Martin talked him out of it, told him about the talent that he had, and he still considers Martin one of his best and closest friends. Three balls in a strike. Boy, that man, he could wave a magic wand, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. Take that, those hands that looked like the hands would lead, and then all of a sudden turn over, and that little line drive left center field, back up the middle. And he walks down him. Walk and that'll bring on Reggie Jackson, who's 0 for 2, but it's been his throw to the plate right now. That's the difference in the ball game. Listen to the hand he gets. It's interesting that both teams tried the two guys that they thought couldn't throw. Robin Young of the Brewers <laughs> in the last half inning and Reggie Jackson of the Angels. And they both came up empty. That's right. Now, Reggie hit into a double play. Started by the second baseman Gantner in the first inning and bounced the first. That was in the fourth. Now he has Cooper holding Downing with Rupert Jones on deck. Angels on top two to one. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. That outside corner. On a night like tonight, that ball will carry very well. The hotter it gets here in Southern California, the better the ball carries. Usually the ball will carry much better here at Anaheim Stadium in the daytime than at night. But as warm and as close as what it is here today, or I should say this early evening, it will carry well. Oh, and one to count. The Brewer bullpen, that's fouled out of play, into action, 0-2 the count. Well, that'll be coming your way this Saturday and Sunday 
the Women's Open Golf Championship from Baldus Rawl in Springfield, New Jersey. The most prestigious event on the women's tour. That ought to be a great one. Well, they have a record $318,250 in prize money. Well, I should say that's, I should take that back. That's Alice Miller leading. Boy, she has cleaned up on the women's tour. Nancy Lopez winning this last week is second. Yeah, the Ray Knights had a busy weekend, didn't they? <laughs> they did. <laughs> <laughs> That's outside. The One Met, and two the count. The Mets swept two from Atlanta yesterday. As Bob McClure, the left-hander, and Gibson, the right-hander. Bob Gibson and Bob McClure. Bobbing up and down in the bullpen. <laughs> That's high pop left side, moving back, coming on his jump. He can cover a lot of ground, and Robin makes the catch. Two gone. And it'll bring on Rupert Jones. I'm gonna say, as the Mets won that doubleheader against the Atlanta Braves, Ray Knight had five hits. Two in the first game, three in the second. And Nancy Lopez was winning the tournament also, so the Knights had a big weekend. I should say they did. Well. You know, it's amazing how the prize money has gone up for the women and on the golf tour, and I think rightfully so. They've got a lot of fine golfers. I, I've always maintained, I said, you turn around. If you ever want to look at somebody and watch them and see how to play, I think some of the best people to watch are the women. Everything is in such sync. That's out of play by Jones. But Alice Miller having a great year. I mentioned over 318,000. Nancy Lopez in that second spot. I'm not sure how far down Patty Sheehan is, but she's got a bunch in the bank. Are you implying that I've been taking my lessons from too many <laughs> men? <laughs> well, you know, down in the winter in the desert where I live, they're down, a lot of them are down there, and they are such a, such a pleasure to, to play with is because you can stand there and you can see things, and you can just watch how they swing and stay within themselves, and of course, when you get people like us that try and <laughs> bully ball it's yeah called. bully ball <laughs> gorilla that thing around <laughs> oh and one the count just inside one and one then when you think you really hit one on the screws and they're playing from the same tees and they're 50 yards in front of you <laughs> you feel like going right back in the clubhouse <laughs> Jones is homered. Goes through the fastball, one and two the count, and he's bounced to second. Got the Angels on the board in the second inning with his 15th home run of the year. And then Will Fong hit his fourth of the year in the same inning with two outs. That has accounted for the Angel two runs. And Milwaukee, the home run by Cooper, his fifth of the year in the third. So all the runs coming tonight with a long ball. There's Coop holding Downing. Ball to straw. Boy, that is a great golf course. Mm -hmm. About 45 minutes from New York City in New Jersey. Got him looking, and Jones knew it, just throws the bat away. And the side retired. We're through six from Anaheim Stadium. It's the Angels two, and the Milwaukee Brewers one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Al Troutwig in New York with this update from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, where the New York Mets are using the long ball to keep up with the Cincinnati Reds. This one belonging to Howard Johnson, his second home run in a week. It's 4-4 as the Reds bat in the sixth. Let's go back to Don and Tim in Anaheim. All right. Right here at Anaheim Stadium, it'll be Charlie Moore, followed by Rick Manning and the leadoff hitter, Paul Molitor. Well, I'll tell you, Al Trowick, he's had a busy night back yes, there. Yes, he has. Good night. Certainly has. They're flying out all over the country. Moore has struck out twice. Mike Witt starting inning number seven, leading it two to one. One ball and no strikes account. Only 
two games in which they've trailed after six innings. Boy, that is. You'd almost lose the house and lot on that, Timmy. Yeah, and they, they don't really have the thump. The Brewers do not have the thump that they once had. Got rid of Gorman Thomas, of course. Robin Young. That big year in 82. Paul Molitor had 19 home runs in 82. Cecil Cooper with 33 home runs a couple of years ago. Schofield on the big country club hop throws him out one away. Center fielder Rick Benny. Tonight's game is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports and is being brought to you by Bud Light, the best as a taste on its own, satisfying but never filling. Rick Manning. Is 0 for 2 tonight. He's bounced to second and popped to short. On deck, Paul Molitor. Two runs on four hits, no errors for California. A run on seven hits, no errors for Milwaukee. Pull to the right side. Will fall to Carew, two gone. What'll happen when you get that sinking fastball tailing away and those ball, hitters try and pull it? Trying to pull it. You saw Cecil Cooper in the sixth inning hit that rope back through the middle by not trying to pull it. But when you're a left-hander and you try to pull that outside sinker, and that's where it more often than not will be, play Pepper with the second baseman all night long. Now you see right there, Mike Whip gone seven and a half innings per start. That's ranked third in the American League. And coming into tonight, just a six and six record. Mike with a 3.03 ERA. So that would lead you to believe that certain things might have happened after he left the ball game. Well, Donnie, he got off to a real slow start, but he has won three decisions in a row and four of his last five. Matter of fact, he's been 3 0 with two no decisions and a 2.06 ERA in his last five outings. Good curveball and the count one and one. Molitor is one for three tonight. He struck out, singled, and he bounced back to whip. in a strike. That's outside and the count goes to three and one. Oh, this is a, that's a good shot from our center field camera on on whip as you turn around and watch the turn that's high straight up in the air and Molitor walks now be alive yeah, Mike Whit with that slow move toward home not a real good move to first and Molitor leading the Brewers in stolen bases with 17 plus you have a left-handed hitter up there it's always tougher to throw for a catcher behind a left-hander than it is for a right-hander because you can't see the runner, regardless of how many times you tell the bench to let you know something. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now Ernie Riles comes on. He's walked. He's hit into a double play, and he's popped a short. Carew will be holding Molitor, who's an excellent base runner. Whit will chase him back. You would figure that Molitor would have that in mind as he just glances down at second base. Schofield staring right back at him from his shortstop position. Whit. There's a case right here of young pitchers know that they have to take that high leg kick. They know that they're slow to the plate. They know the guy at first has speed and will steal as they pitch out. 
They had just gotten Bob Boone's attention from the bench, and he had looked over there, and Gene Mock had him pitch out, I'm sure, as you see Bobby looking over there one more time. And he might do it again. But you've got Riles up on the count, 1-0, with Cooper on deck. There he goes. He didn't pitch out. Throw through. They get it. Boy, Boone got rid of that in a hurry. Now the side is retired. Quick slap tag by Schofield as you look at it again. You said it. They're released by Bob Boone in a perfect throw. Quick tag by Ducky. Bottom of the seventh. Two to one, California. Now you're looking at Donnie Moore down in that Angel bullpen. And prior to the game, I asked Gene Mock about his pitching and about Donnie Moore. This is probably the best one I've had uh, uh, ever. Maybe Mike Marshall for a year or two. But this guy is just unbelievable in his percentage of uh, saves per opportunity. He comes in and uh, when we get a lead in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, the players have such great confidence that Donnie will, will uh, close the door that it's really a lot of fun when he comes in the game because there's so much enthusiasm and, uh, and uh, laughter and excitement on the bench. Well, 16 out of 19 in that save department have gone to Donnie Moore. And there was a time when Donnie Moore was a routine pitcher, standard equipment, fastball slider. He was traded to the Braves and was sent down to the Richmond AAA team and spent about a year with Johnny Sane, the pitching coach down there, and learned that split finger fastball. Here he is, one of the top relievers in the big leagues. And Doug DeSensei has a counter ball and no strikes in the bottom of the seventh inning. He has lined to center, and he's bounced to third. Not actually bounced. Paul Molitor made a great play on him. That's out of play. One and one to count the screen and back down the screen. The sensei has an interesting comparison of Gene Mock and Earl Weaver. I think two interesting guys. Said their desire and mental preparedness is to win is second to none. On the corner one and two. But the big difference is that Gene Mock plays little ball and Earl Weaver plays three run homer ball. <laughs> that is well chronicled, of course. That three run homer. There's a little looper out in front of the plate. Charlie Moore right there. Now there's a case where Danny Darwin forgot where the bat was. If Charlie Moore backs up another step or so, he steps right on the barrel of the bat, and who knows what might happen. Designated hitter, Bobby Grinch. I remember in the minor leagues, Don, the Dodger chain really taught this, as did the Cardinal chain. Pop ups on the infield. A lot of times you can't hear if a pitcher's calling for one infielder, and if the other one's converging, you just grab him. That's exactly right. You got him. Same thing applies when a bat's on the ground. <laughs> so, that's right. Grab it and kick it out of the way. You got nothing else to do. <laughs> Owen won the count. As you look at Darrell Cousins, own plate umpire. That's outside. The American League umpires now, all except for the veteran Jerry Newdecker, have gone to the inside protector. Fouled away by Gritch. Bobby, one for two tonight, is flying to right, and then a gift double to right. Gritch could be a free agent at the end of the year. That's hit off the hands. <laughs> Danny Darwin does the splits just about and comes up with it and throws him out. Second baseman, Rob Wilfong. Danny kind of laughing about that. You look at the dirt and the mound here at Anaheim Stadium. They have changed the texture of the infield here. You folks at home as you look at the scores as we go through. Mets 5-4 with Cincinnati seventh inning. But there you see the grayness of the baselines, the infield. But the pitching mound, the same. A lot of that red clay that they use. But they had to do that. <clears throat> That's out of play left side. Wilfong, the hitter, 0-1 the count. They had to do it because out here the heat would get so hot 
that it would just bake that infield and you would have some bad hops. You remember Dodger Stadium, Ooh, Timmy, years ago. Yes, sir. Now they've done the same thing over there. They've changed that. There's a base hit left field by Wilfo. Oh, a two-out single by Robin. All he is is three for three tonight. Well, if you're an infielder, you got to love it. Well, that's true, but what would happen, it would bake it. It was crushed brick, and what would happen with the texture, there's the heavy infield grass here at Anaheim Stadium. The catcher. But it would, Bob. it would, uh, it would bake, and then when an infielder would move and set himself to slide, it would pull apart and skid like a pie crust might. Uh -huh. So they had to change all of that. And the infielders like it a lot better. But you saw the grass, some people think here that the Angels have let the grass grow a little bit. It's a different texture on the infield than it is on the sidelines in foul territory. If you're a golfer, you might kind of <laughs> get a little bit of an idea of the close nap in certain spots around the greens and things like that, especially in Florida. That's in the foul territory, but it's a different type of grass, a bluegrass out in a mixture on the infield. This is the only place where the fairways in foul territory. That's right. <laughs> that is a typical Florida fairway or rough right in foul territory here. The real tightness. Of course, you'll find a lot of the, a lot of the golfers, they've heard them talk so much about that where they have to really concentrate when they are on some of those courses in Florida where that club head will just bounce off of that, that real tight-knit grass. But they keep the grass a different part on the infield, a different texture, mixture, as Booney takes inside, two and one to count. They can't get it too short because of the heat out here, it'll burn it out. There you see who's not hot. That's a list to try and get out of. Scotty Fletcher with the White Sox on top there. Renneke for Connie. Booney down at the bottom. That's outside. Three and one to count to Bob. He has bounced a second and flying to left. And of course, a lot of the infields will tell you about that little softer texture out there that's a lot easier on the knees, easier on the feet, which all leads to the lower back. Don, I think that last pitch was a pitch out, rather daring pitch out with a count two and one, and two out and Will Fong at first. That's line to left, and right there is Yelp. And Robin makes the catch, and the side retired. No runs on a hit, no errors, and a man left. So we're through seven here at Anaheim Stadium with the Angels leading the Brewers by a score of two to one. So along with Tim McCarver, I'm Don Drysdale, our father confessor here, Mr. Jerry Klein, who's with us every week. And happy to have you with us tonight on ABC's Monday Night Baseball. It's been a good one. It's 2-1. to sure one. The California Angels be their home run or nothing, Timmy. 21,000 here tonight. The Angels 80,000 ahead of last year. They're packing them in and stacking them up here at the Big A. Now here's Ernie Riles to lead off the top of the eighth. He was at bat when Molitor was cut down, ending the seventh inning. Good throw by Boone to Schofield. One ball and no strikes account with Cooper on deck. So the home runs by Rupert Jones and Rob Wilfong in the second. The home run by Cooper in the third. And that's been it. Two balls and no strikes. But it would be a different story had it not been for the throw of Reggie Jackson on a one-out single by Ted Simmons in the sixth inning, cutting down Cecil Cooper at the plate. Well, we would be all knotted up at two. That's high, and the count three and oh. Well, you saw that graphic flashed up there. Our guys right on the stick in the truck as Mike Witt has been knocked out of six of his last ten games in the eighth inning, so the eighth inning has not fared too very well for Michael. A lot of times that can wear on somebody's mind. We'll see what happens. There's a strike in the count three and one. Good hitting situation for young Ernest Riles. He has a little punch. He's got two home runs this year. Three and one. He knows he's going to get the fastball. And he pops it up left side. Might be a play. Schofield a long way to go. And that's just out of his reach. Boy, there's a tough play. About the only man that can get that ball is going to be DeSensei because he can parallel the box seat railing. 
the shortstop actually from his angle he's running right into the stand and if you try to slide into those stands what happens is that third baseman ends up running up running over you the young man with the blue shirt on tried to make the play and the ball boy actually he had the best angle at it if he stayed there but he's got to get out of the way <laughs> he ran right straight towards the outfield towards center field well they're on their toes three two pitch pulled right side big hop will fong there throws him out That'll bring on Cecil Cooper. Baseman, Cecil Cooper. Cooper has accounted for the lone Milwaukee tally tonight with his fifth home run of the year, RBI number 49. That was in the third, as I mentioned before. Then he had a shot right back up the middle his last time at bat in the six. He's two for three, missing outside. Well, here's a case if you're Mike Witt or anybody. You're in a one-run ball game. You got a man who can drive the ball on you, hit it out of the ballpark. You've got to say to yourself, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it with something away. I'm not going to give him anything from the middle of the plate in. He gets a curveball from the outside coming in, and Cooper bounces to Will Fong. There's two away. There's the man that we were talking about. You heard Gene Mark talking about. Not anymore. The fielder. Well, the reason Robin you say in Young. situations uh, like this, a one-run game in late innings, to pitch a guy away instead of inside, there's so many more mistakes made inside. And when you make a mistake inside, it's a long ball. You make a mistake away, it's a single. Well, that's what I always maintain, but people didn't believe that. But if you're going to miss, you miss inside. You don't want to miss out over the plate. Right. Now here's Yount, who's one for three. And the curveball down. John, there's an interesting story about Bob Boone and his face mask. As you see, he's got that mask on. It's kind of rare to have that single bar face mask in the game. A lot of catchers use those bird cages. And that's the same mask Bob Boone bought 10 years ago in a Portland, Oregon sporting goods store. <laughs> How about that? In Eugene, Oregon, I beg your pardon. Yeah, the one in Portland's had the bird right. cages. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and no strikes a cap. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Eugene, Oregon is the only place in the country you can get <laughs> face masks with bars on, just in case you want to. In case you're traveling <laughs> through this summer, folks. <laughs> well, those used to be the... That was the thing. Yeah, but they don't pre really protect a large portion of the face. You can see that neck area is exposed there, and I can tell you for a fact that if a foul tip hits under there, it hurts. Well, you just go to the soup for about a week. You got that right. <laughs> Kill you if you're in this business. Uh, that's right. Well, you're not going to be in it. <laughs> Here's a 2-0 pitch. Oh, Yount got a hanger and fouled it back. And Mike Witt, shoulders just sag, and he knows it. Look at him. He's hot. He's having a little clubhouse meeting with himself right here. That was that hanger on the inside part. A lot of catchers don't catch those pitches. Booney probably just went out there and said, now, come on, bear down. Let's not make a mistake. Power suggestion. That's it. Missing outside, and the count three and one. Clements and Moore in the bullpen. Ted Simmons on deck, so it doesn't make any difference which side Mark wants to go to should he ever make a change here with Simmons. See right there, the line on Mike Whip. Seven and two-thirds, seven hits a run, three walks, five strikeouts. Just missing. So, yeah, the tying runs aboard. That is walk number four. And you got to keep an eye on Robert. He will steal it on you. That's six Ten stolen bases hitter, on the year. Ted Simmons. We've mentioned throughout the game that the Brewers do, do not hit a lot of home runs, but Ted Simmons has the last three home runs they've hit. That's, that was prior to tonight's game. Uh -huh, with, right, right. Before Cooper hit one tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. And here he is again. He had the base hit. 
to Jackson in the sixth inning where Jackson threw Cooper out at the plate. Breaking pitch inside. Nice play by Booney. Bob Boone faced Ted Simmons for too many years when Simmons was a member of the Cardinals, and I don't think Teddy is going to see a fastball that he can handle. Simmons can, tilt, can still turn that fastball around. And we'll sit here and take a peek at the signs of Bob Boone, see what he wants to do, so you at home can go right along with it. Well, he's gone one. We've got a wiggle. I don't know if he's going to throw him a change. He's gone one, wiggle, one. By golly, he did. Shook him off, went to the change. He's using the one to signify he wants the one wiggle. He wants the fastball change. And that's his third best pitch. You get beat on something like that at this stage, oh. you never forgive yourself. Neither will Gene Mock. Well, he's got, he's using sequence signs. Two, one, two, I mean, he's counting down. Or Curveball missing. And it's three and oh, so Mike Witt trying to stay away from the fastball, and he's one ball away from putting the tying run at second base. Well, he's throwing him curveball, change up curveball. I wonder if George Bamberger will green light Ted Simmons here. I know I would. Oh, why not? He's thrown 110 pitches on a warm night. And he comes right with a curveball, three and one. Three zero hook. Well, they're thinking the same way. Now you put yourself in Simmons' spot. You say, well, they came at me with a 3-0 curve. What in the world are going to throw 3-1? Would he do the same thing? Gene Mock, thinking along the same lines. What will it be if indeed he has not even called the pitch himself? Curveball, deep right field, but he didn't get it all. Jackson is there. And that will do it as the Brewers are gone in the eighth inning. He was guessing right. He got the pitch, and he hit it. Just missed it. So we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, two to one California, and we'll return with baseball after this message and news headlines from our local. Well, that'll be coming your way this Sunday, right here on ABC, the USFL title game, the defending champion Baltimore Stars and the Oakland Invaders. That'll be live at eight o'clock Eastern on Sunday, right here on ABC. Here's Schofield. Schofield has fly to center. He's lined to right. It'll be Schofield, Carew, and Downing in that order. Takes the curveball for the strike. Well, when you think of Dick Schofield, it's short. Of course, Angel fans can go back a couple of years and think of the little rooster that came over from the Boston Red Sox, Rick Burleson. Rick here the ballpark prior to the game he's still working out right now his problem is throwing a little bit you see California on top of Milwaukee he's been hitting the ball well that's foul away and the count one and two but Burleson had the bad rotator cuff and then he was working out the last New Year's when he dislocated his shoulders of all things lifting weights and that just set him back all the more. Oh, I'll tell you what a battler that, that man is. Schofield to Riles on the big hop. Throws him out. One away, and here's the leadoff hitter, Rod Carew. I'll tell you, when you see Dick Schofield also, you think of the job that his father did back in 1960 when Dick Grote went down with a broken wrist in the six weeks of shortstop that Dick Schofield played for the soon-to-be world champion Pirates. That's right. That's right. Boy, I'll tell you, that the duck, he was something. He was another one of those Muggsies. Yes, he sir. got his nose right down he in got the dirt. That right. Carew takes a fastball for the strike. 0 for 2 tonight. Has walked flying to right and bounced back to Darwin. Takes a little bit off. Misses low and away. Wanted it. Didn't get it. See Brian Downing in the background on deck. 
just the way that Carew lays the bat back. Bounced right side. I hop right there is Gentner to the first baseman Cecil Cooper, two gone. When you think of Carew and Cooper, you go back a few years to Cecil Love Cooper Miller. because Brian it Downing. was Cooper who had a long talk with Carew about hitting. And all of a sudden, Coop has got a little bit of that same style, that weight on the back through their conversation. There's Gary Pettis with his back to the camera. Gary, of course, with that left arm and a little bit of a, it wasn't a cast per se, it didn't look as all wrapped as Brian Downing doesn't get the fastball 0-1. Darwin turned that one loose. There it is right there, you see. The wrap on the arm of Gary Pettis. I told you before, Pettis. <laughs> that was Daryl Scania speaking in as Darwin will go to Cooper, and that'll do it. Very easy. One, two, three, eighth inning for Darwin and the Brewers, and we're through eight from Anaheim Stadium. It's two to one California. We'll return with ABC's Monday Night Baseball after this word from our local stations. In Cincinnati, the New York Metropolitans continue to hit them out of Riverfront Stadium. Moments ago, this was George Foster taking it deep over the left field wall, his 13th of the year with one on. The Mets have four home runs in the game and in the seventh lead the Reds 7-4. to four. That's the story right here. For Milwaukee, the Angels two runs, five hits, no airs. Milwaukee a run on seven, it's no airs. And the three scheduled hitters for the Brewers are Ogilvy, Gantner, and Moore. There's the chairman of the board on your right up there, the grand old cowboy himself, Gene Autry. He's as fit as a fiddle, I'll tell you that. And it's an exciting year for him, and everybody that's ever had anything to do with Gene Autry is happy for him. 25th anniversary of the California Angels. There's a strike to Ogilvy. Gene had those two phones in front of him, one of them probably to the bullpen, saying, get more up. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mike Brown in right field, so Jackson is out. Brown's in right. Out of play. 0-2 the count. So your outfield of Downing, Jones, and Brown from left to right. The outfield deep. Rightfully so. They don't want a ball hit over their head. You've got Jimmy Gantner on deck. Ogilvy is one for two tonight. A ball and two strikes at camp. Baseball, a strange game, D. The guy who makes a defensive play of the game is taken out in the last inning <laughs> for defense. For obvious reasons, of course. Brown with a little more speed. But Reggie with that big, big play back in the sixth inning. A ball and two strikes account. Oh, that's hit hard. Deep down the line, it is gone. Home run by Ben Ogilvy. Got a fastball up over the plate, and he hit a line shot out of here. He's as strong as any man in the game. Well, and Mike Witt threw him three curveballs in a row, Second and one would think Jim that Gantner. he had him set up with a fastball, and he tried to come inside, it appeared, with the fastball. Now look at Boone moving behind the plate, and that's about where the ball is. Rod Carew with a good play to Witt. Well, Gantner is gone. We'll go back and show you that again. We can, Danny Sedaris will re-rack that for us, I believe. Look at it again. The catcher, Charlie Moore. Here's that pitch once again, the home run. As Mike Witt, they looked like they were in between. Witt wanted to come inside, Boone wanted to go away, and as often happens, the ball's right down the middle. Well, there's where a pitcher has to have a sign with a catcher, not necessarily a shake-off sign, but some other type of a sign. If the catcher wants in, you show him another sign, and that means away, or vice versa. Charlie Moore bunting foul. But in a case like that, you just can't give Ogilvy anything from the middle of the plate in to that, hit the ball. goes back to your point of the eighth inning. 
about if you're going to make a mistake, you make it away. And that's the point you made last inning. And should have been heated by Mike Witt. I think the pitch was all right. You'd thrown uh, Ogilvy three curveballs in a row, but he tried to come inside with that fastball. And to a guy like Gentle Ben, he's not so gentle on those hanging heaters. No, he's not. And that's a case of what we've talked about so many times, wild in the strike zone. And that's where it was. I know we used to use a sign, just all you do is drop your head and show the white button on the top of the cap, and that just meant automatically the other way. You want the pitch, but not the location. Exactly. That's line to left, down and coming in a hurry. He's there. So there's two gone, and that will bring on Manning. Center fielder, Rick Manning. Well, if you're looking at the Angel ninth inning, the man who was due to lead up but is now out for defensive purposes, Reggie Jackson. That is low, the count 1 0, so it'll be Mike Brown, Rupert Jones, and Doug DeSensei. The thinking is proper on all sides exactly. except the location. Mm hmm. There's the strike. Thinking right along the ways that you'd want to do it. And that's the story. The ninth inning home run by Ben Oglevy is fifth home. Make that his fourth home run of the year. RBI number 24. And we're in a 2-2 tie. Hit to the hole. There's Will Fong on the knee. Turns to get it. Tied retired, but... The run on the home run. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning, and we're all tied up at two. Now, Mike Brown will lead it off as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, tied at two. It'll be Brown, Jones, and DeSensei. And a reminder, this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. So here's Brown. And a 2-2 tie. Two runs, eight hits, no errors for the Brewers. Two runs, five hits, no errors for the Angels. Everything coming on the long ball. There's a looper, and Cecil Cooper almost jumped too quick, and he knew it. Cooper hung there as long as he could hang, Timmy. Well, here's that looper to Cooper that you call. <laughs> and he did almost Rupert jump too soon. Jones. And the interesting thing about it, had he been guarding the line, that ball's a base hit. We talk about guarding the line, and it's a very controversial part of baseball. But had Cooper been guarding that line, that ball's a little flare to right field. Here's Rupert Jones. Out of play. The count is 0-1. He had a good pitch to hit. Looks like they're trying to keep the ball up on Jones a little bit now. I like to watch Rupert's eyes when he gets in there, how he gets them. <laughs> That's hit to the hole. There's Cooper. Good diving play. Rolls away from goes to Darwin. In time. What a play by Cooper. And an excellent play by Darwin. Staying with it. And for the second time, had Cooper been on the line, that ball is a base hit. George Bamberger does not subscribe to that guarding the line in eight innings as much as in late innings as much as some managers do. What a play by Cooper and a good play by Darwin. He got to the bag, found the bag, and stretched to make the catch. That ball trying to roll away from Cecil, and he just reached out and snared it and said, no, you don't. Come over here. So there's two gone, and here's Doug DeSensei, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Uh, Doug's five-game hitting streak on the line. On deck, Bobby Gritch. A 2-2 tie. Bottom of the ninth. Want to know the count? Cecil Cooper is such a good hitter, you forget about his defense. Oh, he's always been a outstanding. Outstanding. Won the gold glove two times. That's low and away, the count. 2-0. Speaking of first baseman and left-handed fielding first baseman, Don Mattingly had his 153-game streak broken yesterday. He made an error. 
There's Coop. Yeah, with Mattingly, that for a while has been unheard of. Outside, 3-0. So you can see what Darwin's thinking right here on the Sensei, exactly what we talked about with Witt with the left hander And Ted Simmons back in the seventh inning. Stay away. Stay away. But you've got to throw some strikes away. He's got three balls and no strikes to the Sensei. And he came with a breaking pitch. So they're thinking along the same lines as Gene Mock was a while back with Simmons. Now to Sensei, up on the count three and one. He's got to look for a spot in his own right here, Timmy, that he can turn on. Yeah, actually, when you're when a hitter is ahead in the count, you make the box and the, the box, which is the zone that you're looking for, you make it a little smaller than you do in an even count. And naturally, when you're a defensive hitter, you're protecting the outside part of the plate. High chopper, Molotar is over, full turn to get him. So we're going to go to overtime. Three up, three down. The Angels gone in the ninth. We'll go to the tenth in a 2-2 two -two tie. There you see it again. The reason a third baseman will make the pivot and the play in this situation is to get something on the throw. And Molitor, a fabulous athlete, does it very, very well. So that's it. Through nine complete. Milwaukee two, California two. Big A in Anaheim. Still very light out here in Southern California. As the Angels make a pitching change, that's the story as we go to the top of the 10th inning of play. Young left-hander Pat Clements comes on, Timmy. Clements 5-0 and oh with 2.77 ERA, his 32nd appearance. He is a large part of the Angels' success this year is attributed to the young left arm of Pat Clements, along with Donnie Moore, who's won five in the bullpen. Also, Stu Clyburn. Pat is from Chico, California. He was 4-2 and two at 2.69 ERA in Waterbury, Connecticut last year. He's come a long way for this league. Well, I should say, I'll tell you the one thing about Clements. He will come right at you. He does not scare off. And Mike Witt, he pitched a whale of a ball game. He threw 124 pitches. But on a warm night, 124 pitches. The top of the order coming up. Gene Mark says, I just might go with a fresh man as he goes to Pat Clements. Now Molitor asking for time did not get it. You could see him standing and asking for time. And home plate umpire Daryl Cousins said no. So he just stayed right there and took the pitch. Looks like Paul had something in his eye and he tried to step out, but not in time. That's hit to right field. Mike Brown is there, makes the catch, one away. Here is part of the reason why Gene Mark went to Pat Clements. Ernest Riles. Because you've got the left-hander Riles filed, followed by the left-hander Cooper. Now, Donnie Moore, he's ready. I'll tell you, on a night like this, you can be ready just putting on your uniform. <laughs> Shaking hands with somebody. That's it. That's low. Want to know the count. And in extra inning ball games, you play extra inning games a half an inning at a time. You're not really concerned with a lineup. You're concerned with three guys. See right there, 17 and 7 in extra innings. And the Angels were 22 and 30 in extra innings last year. And a lot of those close ball games, the success in close ball games, can be attributed to their bullpen because you got to have a good bullpen to win close ball games. Top left side might be a play to Sensei getting over quick. Now we'll reach in, can't make the play. Look out, Doug. That was too far back. And of course, right there, the rule as you look at the third base umpire, John Hirschbeck, when the infielder goes into the stands, he is, it's fair game, the ball. If he comes up with it, fine. If the ball is knocked away, there's no play. But should that fan reach out over the box seat railing and interfere, then the umpire, in his discretion, can call the hitter out. But that was well into the seat. Two and two the count. Yeah, with all the back problems that Doug DeSensei has had, you 
Hope he didn't hurt himself going into the stands there. There's Mike Witt. And he's got to be thinking about that fastball to Ben Ogilvy. Riles to Schofield from behind the bag gets him to gone. First baseman, Cecil Cooper. Here's kind of a grass skimmer right here. This is in normal speed. Now watch what it does, Timmy. Little scooter, and it slows it down perfectly for Schofield to throw him out. I've got to be honest, I don't believe that, I, I don't know about the National League, but I can tell you about the American League on the on the regular grass surfaces as you look at Cecil Cooper, out of the way. I don't think that I've seen slower infields in all of my life than this year. Not only this ballpark, that's right, but there not, are other parts. Oh, yes, sir, all the grass infield. Well, but, of course, Wrigley Field, a good example, where the Cubs play their games, and the reason they grow it High is because the left side of their field infield with Bowen say there's a base hit by Cooper to right field so Brown gets on it in a hurry Cecil Cooper is three for five tonight but in that case Clements had the curve ball out of way and said if you're going to do it then do it with this out there well Detroit's infield is very hot the Red Sox every all the grass infield there's nothing uh, Cleveland Comiskey Park Fenway. Of course, there are more artificial surfaces in the National That's League. That's right. Kind of tough to keep them tall, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there is Robin Yount. Oh, and won the count. <laughs> but the point you bring up is a good one because if you're playing on all this high grass and artificial surface, the contrast can really mess you up. Oh, it can. Trying to feel the, your timing as an infielder. Is... That's the key, the infielder's timing, and a lot of times it'll be the outfielder's timing getting to a ball in the alley. They've got to really realize where they are, which they should anyway. One ball and one strike. That's low. The count two and one to Yount. On deck is Ted Simmons. Just outside, it goes to three and one. Infield, double play depth to Sensei, fairly close to the line at third. The outfield deep and straight away, as you see. I should say there's two outs. The Sensei just close to the line right here with a 2 2 tie. Go ahead, run it first. And he walks him. bring on Ted Simmons but I would have to believe no action in the angel bullpen as I said before Donnie Moore has been throwing with Clemens I th I think you would rather have Simmons hitting from the right side than from the left side even though he's a considerably better hitter this year from the right side his history shows that he's a better hitter from the left side this year however he's 333 as a right-handed batter 229 from the left side and the curveball is outside. Well, we'll see what happens. One ball and no strikes. But it's awfully hard to keep falling from behind those hitters. See if Bob Boone continues to throw breaking balls to Ted Simmons. Simmons, two for four. Cooper, the go-ahead run at second. High chopper, Schofield. He'll go the short way. They get the force at second, and the side retires. Well, the Brewers are gone, and we go to the bottom of the 10th inning tied at two. We'll return with ABC's Monday Night Baseball after this word from our local station. And the bottom of the 10th inning, a 2-2 tied. Bobby Gritch, Rob Wilfong, and Bob Boone to face Danny Darwin. Out of play, 0-1. Manning slightly in right center. Now Young looking at him and moving a step or so to his left as he glances back over to check the foul line to see exactly where he's at. Then he turns around and 
checks the outfield wall to check that out. Tell you, that showed me something right there just watching you out in the outfield. That's out of play. There's Robin. Well, if you've got athletic talent, you can play any place. You can especially go from the infield to the outfield. A little tougher job going from the outfield to the infield. Ball's on top of you a little bit quicker. On to the count to Bobby Gritch. Just missing that breaking pitch, Bobby. <laughs> Doing everything he could to stay on his feet. He was eyeballing that curveball. And the fans, 21,273, come to life as they look for a angel rally. High. Two and two the count. You can understand George Bamberger's reasoning by continuing to go with Danny Darwin. He's lost four in a row, hadn't won a ball game since June 11th, and he does not want Darwin to get a no decision. That's hooked down the left field line. It's a fair ball. It'll go to the corner. Yelled over, playing the carom, and Gritch is at second base with a double. He hung him a curveball. Well, I think George Bamberger would rather have a no decision than a loss, however. That's right. Then that big L. A pretty good slider to Gritch, and he went out there and got it. That was the third slider in a row thrown by Danny Darwin, and Rob Wilfong is going to be up there, and I would think he's got one thing in his mind, dude. Well, he's already done it tonight. Mm -hmm. He beat out a bunt. Excellent bunter. Now, Mark has talked to Wilfong. What we'll have to see right here, there's two ways to look at this. You've got Molitor with excellent speed at third. You've got good speed at short and Riles. Now, if they put on the wheel play, as you look at Bamberger, and on the far side, Herm Storet, the pitching coach, and big Frank Howard, he's looking at the lineup card. Conceivably, Gritch with not that great a speed. Right. You could have the wheel play on with Molitor charging and a play at third with the shortstop Riles moving there. Now, Mark might have said, if that's what they think about doing, I want you to make Cooper feel the ball and make him go that long way across the infield. And remember, it's a tag play at third base. Yes, so the sir. throw's got to be a little quicker, and it's got to be right on the money, too. Now we'll see what will happen. Hello, he showed nothing. He might just going to let him try and pull the ball. That might have been a... Well, that's another option. Make sure that top hand comes over. <laughs> Moose Stubing. Moose, the third base coach. Bobby Knopf over at first for the Angels. Oh, there was a good pitch, I think, by Darwin. Now they might take that off. The Brewers have shown no signs of using that rotation play. No, not at all. Now Darwin. In the bottom of the 10th inning, there's Gene Mock. You think that is an intense lookout. Fastball inside. Gritch diving back to the bag at second. No, there is no wheel play. Gene Mock looked like the 10th player on the Angels team, didn't he? He's thinking all the time. I'll Great tell you. Shot. We play with neighbors down in the desert in the wintertime, and I'll tell you, he's thinking baseball. As soon as his right eye opens in the morning, <laughs> till his left eye closes at night. <laughs> he pops it up, and Darwin makes a play. So Wilfong cannot get the job done. Now, there's an interesting thing right here. They let him hit at the very start, Timmy. Now the count two and one, and he's bunting. Two and one when you're assured of the uh, fastball. And Wilfong Bunning and Danny Darwin credit him for coming right toward the line. That's where he's supposed to come because anything over the mound, Cecil Cooper should suck up. And Danny Darwin made a nice play. Now here's a case that just eliminates all kinds of moves. And oh, I'll tell you, man, thing. 
That general is hot. He is hot. Well, you saw Wilfong dropping the bat head, and he bunted the underside of the ball, the bottom of the ball, and when you do that, you're going to pop it up. Always try to keep the barrel of the bat above the hand. And when you do that, it's tough to pop a ball up when you're bunting. Here's Bob Boone. You see one hit in his last 17 at bats with runners on base. And Gene Mock again. Boy, that one out, that lack of a sacrifice, you just don't know how much it changes. Bamberger now, he's got a, you would assume he would walk, he walked the bases loaded. But not now. We're going to have to get a base hit to score Bobby Gritch. And he takes a strike, and the count is 0-1. Longest outing of Danny Darwin's career right here. Pops him up, shallow center. Manning broke back, but has time to react and come in to make the catch, and there's two gone. Also, with that winning run at third base, you have your infield in, your outfield in. It changes the entire complexion of the inning, but with Rich at second base, technically you need a base hit to score. Schofield. There's George Bamberger over in the Milwaukee dugout. Bambi. Boy, I'll tell you, he's a dilly. He's turning around checking that lineup card, too. Who's next, he says? Well, it's Mr. Carew. So well, we'll pitch to Dickey. <laughs> I think I better pitch to this man right here. Schofield having a rough time average-wise at 189. He's 0 for 3 tonight. But I'll tell you, you can't go to sleep on this little man. He's got five home runs, 21 RBIs. But right there, you see what he's done against Darwin. And a breaking pitch outside. The thing right here. Schofield just trying to get the ball through the infield. Gritch, the Angels have an advantage with two outs because Gritch is moving on any ball hit. Ron Carew on deck. Outside and the count 2-0. Schofield's had three game-winning RBIs this year. You saw Gritch at second. He's the all-important run as far as the Angels are concerned. He's the winning run, a 2-2 tie in the bottom of the 10th inning. That's high at 3-0. think you would look for a green light here. No, not with Peru on deck. But you never know. No, that's what makes the game so fascinating. And he walks him on four pitches. So Schofield's aboard. For Danny Darwin, that is his third walk of the evening. And here's Rod Carew. Frank Howard, cap off. Andy Etchebarren leaning up. McClure and Gibson. They were up earlier in the game. Rod Carew is 0 for 3 tonight. Walked his first time at bat. He's flying to right, bounced back to the pitcher, and bounced to second. Look at this. Leading hitter with runners in scoring position. I think it's safe to say that George Bamberger wants to get Danny Darwin a win. Otherwise, he brings in McClure in a situation like this. Up high, 1-0. and oh. There are varying degrees of wanting to get your pitcher a win. And I think the fact, as we see Herm Sturett out to talk to Danny Darwin, I think the fact that Darwin's still in there is an indication of how desperate Bamberger is to get this man on track. 
Well, the thing right here that Sturette, he's out there saying, now look, don't be so careful to Carew that you walk him to load the bases because then anything could happen. You've got Brian Downing on deck. Well, a lot of managers, you're right. They like to get a, a pitcher in a situation like that, try and work him out of it. He's pitched a whale of a ball game tonight. Yes, Two runs on six hits. But right here, he's got a ball and no strikes to Rod Carew with a winning run at second base and Bobby Gritch. Schofield over at first. Ground ball hit to Riles. He has it underhand to Gantner, and that will do it. So the Angels are gone in the 10th. No runs on a hit. We're through 10 complete, a 2-2 tie. We'll return to ABC's Monday Night Baseball after this word from our local station. There's some National League finals. The Cubs over the Padres, 6-3. Frazier over De Leon Durham, his 11th home run of the year. That was the full game, and here is the completed game, San Diego. So they actually go in the books today as a split, winning the suspended game 8-4. Stoddard over Sorensen, McReynolds, and Bosley homer. It was the Dodgers 4-3 over Pittsburgh. Valenzuela the winner 9-8. De Leon the loser. He is 2-12. And, and Atlanta over Montreal. Mailer the winner 12-7. Gullickson the loser. Murphy is 21st home run of the year. And it was the White Sox 9-4 over the Tigers. Nelson the winner over Petrie. Herndon is 7th. And Fisk at 2. Number 20 and 21. Right fielder, One was a grand slam. Cleveland four to nothing over Texas. Heaton over Mason Castillo, his second home run of the year. Kansas City over the Yankees five two. Saberhagen over Necro. Smith and Balboni homered. Well, right here we go to the top of the eleventh inning, and here's the man who took us into extra innings and in Ben Ogilvy. That leadoff home run off of Mike Witt. Leading off the top of the ninth inning. All the runs coming tonight on home runs. Single home runs. Cooper and Ogilvy for Milwaukee. Jones and Wilfong for California. So in that Kansas City game, their win over the Yankees. Balboni with his 14th home run. And it's either hit or miss with Big Steve. He leads the American League in strikeouts with 84. Outside, 3-0. and oh. Yeah, that's true. And just a reminder that your local news will follow immediately after the completion of this ball game. Well, curveball, curveball. They weren't going to go to the fastball to Ogilvy, and they walk him. That'll be coming your way this Saturday on ABC Sports Wide World of Sports. Second we had light heavyweight fight, Tyrell Jim Biggs and Eddie Jim Richardson, and the Cracker Firecracker 400. That stock car race. That'll be five o'clock Eastern and Pacific, four o'clock Central. Bill Elliott, the favorite in that pole position in that Firecracker 400. Right now, the NASCAR leader in points. Here's Jimmy Gantner, and we'll see how Bamberger wants to play it with Donnie Moore throwing in the bullpen. He's going to bunt out in front, and they wait for the ball. Clemens does. He goes to Wilfong. So the sacrifice works as Ogilvy goes to second base. That's one four. If he might be scoring, and they'll bring on Charlie Moore. And a good bunt by Gantner. He wanted to bunt it toward the first base side with Carew holding the runner. Now watch Carew, speaking of Rodney, watch him get down. Now he gets down, but he's behind Clements. <laughs> Just in case Clements wanted to go to second base. Well, out of time was called. They had a meeting at the mound, and third base umpire John Hirschbeck is saying, no, go ahead, we've called time. So Ogilvy, who tried to steal it, he has to go back to second base. Try though, why not? Yeah, sure. Benji said there's nobody standing over there. I'll just try and pilfer it if I can. And here comes Marcel Latchman, the pitching coach. You know, you wonder on that bunt if Clements would have kept coming hard, that ball being butted almost right back to him. Mm -hmm. And if he'd have caught that ball on the fly, 
after it hit the ground on, on the high bounce. If he'd have had to play at second base or not. Could have. Marcel Latchman does make pitching changes here for the California Angels. It is not imperative that the manager go out, the manager being Gene Mock, of course, and Marcel's going to make that change. And it's got to be Donnie Moore. Well, it'll be more to more. Donnie Moore to Charlie Moore. So indeed, he has made the change. He's hadn't made the move to the bullpen. And Donnie Moore walking off of the mound. He'll grab his jacket and he'll come on. Well, that'll be all for Pat Clements. So we have a break in the action here at the Big A in Anaheim. We're one out in the top of the 11th inning. Ogilvy at second base in a 2 2 tie. Well, as expected, the new pitcher, right hander Donnie Moore. And there is numbers, and they are quite impressive. A good fork ball. As we mentioned earlier, it was taught to him by Johnny Sane, who is now the pitching coach of the Atlanta Braves. But it was when Donnie Moore was exiled to Richmond, the AAA affiliate of the Atlanta Braves, that he learned that pitch and really helped the Angels. I know the Angels are surely glad of it. Indeed, they are 16 out of the 19 saves for the Angels this year. Now, more to more as he delivers a strike in the count of zone one. Donnie with that five and three mark. He's not in a save position right here. He's in a hold -em position and a win position. He's in that save that run position. That's what he's in right now. That's bounced up the middle. Schofield over in a hurry from behind the bag. The second base side of the bag to throw him out. On the play, Ogilvy moves to third. And here's Rick Manning. So the Milwaukee Brewers have the go-ahead run 90 feet away with two out. Center fielder, Rick Had a good Manning. play by Schofield. As you see, Oglesby with a good jump to go to third base. Takes a little mini turn around third and hoping to come home just in case something happens at first. You're in an interesting situation here, Don. Best pitch is his fork ball. To be effective, it's got to go down. Fastball. One ball and no strikes account. And when it goes down, you got a man on third base, and that means Bob Boone's got his work cut out for him to try to keep the ball in play. He's got to knock it down if it's in the dirt. Keep it in front of him. There's a high chopper. There's Schofield from the second base side again. He throws Manning out. The two ground ball out. Donnie Moore's done it again. And we go to the bottom of the 11th inning. Here you see Downing, Brown, and Jones in a 2-2 tie. That's the story as we go to the bottom of the 11th inning and a new pitcher for the Brewers. And it's going to be right-hander Bob Gibson, 6-4, a 3.19 ERA. He has started one ball game this year. This is his 21st relief appearance. He's worked 59 innings and struck out 36 and walked 31. Bob Gibson, quite a great namesake there with Robert, the Hall of Famer for the St. Louis Cardinals. Yes, sir. I can tell you about Mr. Gibson of the Cardinals. <laughs> I've seen this Bob Gibson a few times. Or the Angels. As Brian Downing Bob will lead it off, followed by Mike Brown Brian. and then Rupert Jones. Herm Sturette, the pitching coach of the Milwaukee Brewers, <laughs> has an interesting comment about Gibson. He said he has a better than average fastball and he's wild enough to be good. And you and I know what that means. <laughs> he's like the other Gibson, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got that right. Now here's Brian Downing 0 for 3 tonight. 1 and 0 the count with Mike Brown on deck. Now Danny Darwin, he did himself proud. He pitched a whale of a ball game. He has. Really nothing to show for it except maybe getting back into that. Whoa, what was that? Go back and look at that pitch again. <laughs> we can. I'm not. Told you Herm Sturette said he was wild enough to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Two and oh. Watch him cock that arm. Well, thankfully, this comes with nobody on base. Two and oh to Downing. There's a strike in the count. 
two and one. I got to be honest with you. I don't remember Gibson with this kind of motion. Unless he's come up with a new pitch. See right there, six wins in relief, so he's had a good year. That's outside. Three and one to count. From born in Philadelphia, makes his home in Springfield, Pennsylvania. Twenty eight years of age. And he walks in. So Downing's aboard. Right you see right there the One. Mets over Brown. Cincinnati on 25 hits in the ball game. Seven to five. Lynch over Tibbs. So Roscoe the save, huh? Four home runs by the Mets too. What's that? Six uh, six wins in a row. Seven seven in a row. Yeah. Now here's Mike Brown, and we'll see how Gene Mock wants to play this. As we still have some action in the bullpen for the Brewers. And it's Bob McClure, the left-hander. Bunt and a good one. Cooper has a play, and that's to tag the runner going by. Downing the second. So the sacrifice works. Cooper unassisted. Rupert Jones will be the hitter. His run does not mean a thing. They might just put him aboard and go to Duck the Sensei. First base is open. Jones. And Rupert didn't think last summer that there was any way for him to be intentionally passed and have a team be working to Doug DeSensei De behind him. But Rupert has been so hot. He has a home run in tonight's game, two yesterday. And George Bamberger and Gibson, they almost have to put him on. Oh, yeah. Well, his run does not mean a thing. The winning run is at second base in Brian Downing. That's ball two outside. The Angels were forced to pick up Rupert Jones because of the exit of Freddie Lynn and also the guy that they got as the type A free agent or for the type A free agent in the compensation pool was Donnie Moore. That's right. course coming your way on Sunday it'll be the USFL championship right here on ABC their third championship game it'll be the Oakland Invaders the Baltimore Stars from East Rutherford New Jersey and it'll be eight o'clock Eastern time Baltimore the defending USFL champions well here's Doug Desensei and there's George Bamberger on your right Herm Storette on your left Bambi got that look on his face saying, oh, why me? Why did it have to be like this? This particular situation. Oh, out there, there's a great guy, George Bamber. He's one of the most fun men I've ever been around. Yes, he is. Ex-manager of the Mets in his second time around for the Brewers. Now, here's the sensei. He's taking the collar tonight. On that corner, and the count 0 and 1. Well, Peter Lasser gives us a good, some good news that the American League has a curfew rule. <laughs> but the bad news is it's five hours away. Yeah, the bad news <laughs> is this game started at 5 10. <laughs> now, down again, second, and Rupert Jones at first. Good fastball by Gibson. I'll tell you, he got a little something on that. Some high cheese. So Gibson out in front of DeSensei, 0 and 2. Jones, really not a big lead at first base if he's thinking about breaking up a double play. Up the middle, left the base hit. Downing got a late start. He's at third. Manning up. The throw to the play. Not in time. Angels win it three to two. Don, we 
talk about with two strikes protecting away and how the experienced hitter does it so well. This is not a bad pitch. And Doug DeCente just gets a piece of it out on the end of the bat. Rick Manning with a strong throw, but it's too high. And this ball game's history, 3-2 Angels. Well, it was a good one. And if that's the indication of the rest of the series, it will be something. So for Tim McCarver, I'm Don Drysdale saying good night from Anaheim. ABC's Monday Night Baseball and ABC Sports Exclusive has been brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. By Bud Light, the best has a taste all its own, satisfying but never filling. By Kellogg's Corn Flakes, gold and crunchy flakes of corn, a delicious start to your morning. And by the makers of Right Guard, you work hard, you need Right Guard. Once again, the final score, the Angels 3 and the Brewers 2. Be sure to join us tonight for ABC News Nightline, immediately following your late local news on Nightline Tonight, the Supreme Court may be moving in new directions on critical issues like separation of church and state, police power, and the rights of the accused. That's tonight on Nightline, after your late local news. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong for more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Final score tonight, 3-2 to two, California.